Hi there, good afternoon. Welcome along to Friday at the Modus Super Series, a double session of darts, and it is decision day, of course. The final five places in the field for finals night will be filled. And last night, we took a step closer to filling those, or one player in particular did. Here's what happened on the first night of Group B. Keelan Kay endured a night to forget this, a rare highlight in a session that saw the Lord of the Board fail to record a single success. Lee Cox was facing that fate himself, but earned a lifeline with victory over Kay in the pair's last match. Wesley Harms managed to win half of his games despite not being at his best, but this recovery shot versus Cox rather summed up both of the players' evenings. Rob Collins won three of his four matches. The Man of Steel in a strong position to mount a challenge for finals night. But it was the Lions four as Ryan Palmer took maximum points to put qualification in the palm of his hand. Yeah, really good night for Ryan Palmer. Matthew Edgar was in commentary alongside me for it last night. A 10 to 1 outsider winning all of his matches. Fantastic work from him. Yeah, it was a night. You mentioned recovery from Wesley Harms in one of his shots, and I felt like that was kind of what we're saying all night people having to recover from situations because there were so many points where anyone could have done what Ryan Palmer did yesterday and win all four of those games because everyone had opportunities and chances but it was Ryan Palmer that recovered and was able to take those opportunities in the end the biggest outsider being top of the table yeah it's kind of a uniform table we'll look at it now that 86420 scenario that we get quite often here but the two points for Lee Cox in that match against Keelan K probably keeps him alive and when we look at Keelan Kay at the bottom of the table, I said in commentary on the very first game yesterday, one of the patterns we see with Keelan Kay when he comes down here is that tendency to follow the first game and the first performance. If he struggles with that opening game, he tends to struggle all night. And when he's done well down here, what he's done is he's started well. And that's a worrying sign that he's not been able to have that recovery in a group in the past. And he's got a big recovery to do tonight. He's probably going to have to win all four. Yeah, we are going to look at the numbers from last night's group. Now... I felt, Matt, and I'll get your opinion on this, that it was kind of a below par Group B. The average overall doesn't really reflect that. Absolutely. I was thinking about the things in my head when we was coming up here about what I'm going to say about Group B and how it did. It felt underwhelming at times. And then when you see the numbers, the numbers are actually very solid, very good. And when you look at the highest winning average only being a 94.11 there from Ryan Palmer, it's not like someone's put in a 100-plus average that has boosted those averages. That actually shows that it's probably a more consistent night than it felt at the time. Yeah, well, Group B will get back underway tonight, 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV and here at the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. But this afternoon, it's all about Group C. Two places up for grabs. It looks like we know who will take one of them, and the betting reflects that, because David Evans, well, he won all of his matches yesterday and is a very, very strong odds-on favourite to win the group. But as I just said, we did see an outsider do really well last night. I love to stand there and argue with the odds and with the bookies and say that there's value in other places, but at the moment I don't see anything but that in terms of the group winner. So... I fully agree with that, which means we've got second place still to play for. Two players will go through this group, unlike Group A. So there's still another opportunity in a position there, and that one could be a bit more open. Right, we'll have a look at the table for Group C. Uh, just going into the, the final day of action here. Evans, 10 points, probably a win away. Mal Cumming and Charlie Large probably need to win all of their matches, don't they? They probably do, but one of the things that is good about this at the moment is no one's on zero. If you're on zero, you've got no chance, at least with this and with someone like David Evans at the top of it who's won all of his games, it does open it so that everybody's still involved. Had David Evans been on the top with, say, eight points, you know, we may have been looking at a different sort of situation, but right now we've got a runaway leader and everyone's in with this. Well, let me get a prediction from you. David Evans, we're going to sort of take for granted that would be too safe a bet. Who do you think is going to join him if he does make it through? I was dreading that question, <laughs> to be honest. I think this is one where it could be down to three players, I think. I'm going to go with three, but I think it's going to come down to Lauby or Rickwood, which I think are one of the very last games of the day. Right, splinters there from Matthew Edgar, but no splinters in his tips. He has given us some selections. Talk us through your working here. 
I think today's a really, really good day for the punter, actually. We said yesterday that you had to really dig deep into markets, and a lot of that came down to the value wasn't there with the two young lads in the field. But actually today, and what they did yesterday, has really changed the odds. I think one thing we can really take a look at is some of these 180 markets. David Evans yesterday, something that really catches the eye there against Charlie Large to get the most 180s at 6-5. to five. David Evans was filling it up quite a lot yesterday, and I think he could be worth keeping an eye on. And he's got his lucky duck, and that's all your fault as well, isn't it? Well, I don't know if it's fault, but it may be the fault for the other players because it's certainly worked well for him so far. Well, let's see if it continues to bring a winning streak. David Evans is in action in the first match of the session. He takes on Danny Lowby, and Matthew Edgar is going to join Henry Deacon to talk you through it. Thank you very much, Chris. Very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Moda Super Series, where it is Friday, where it is the season day. We're going to find out five of the six identities that's going to make it through to finals night tomorrow evening. We could probably put David Evans, we could probably put Ryan Palmer there, but the I's need to be dotted, the T's need to be crossed. We know Moreno Blom is definitely going to be there. He qualified on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. But for David Evans, it was the perfect day for the 33-year-old from Preston. Why is for Danny Lowerby? Well, it was... Kind of the story of his week yesterday where First there was moments, David to there was glimpses. First. Game on. But nothing really materialised. And Charlie Cortefine is back with us at the Super Series. One of the best referees on the planet is going to be 80. with us for the next couple of days. And one of the best starting YouTubers on the planet is with us. The Group B champion of Week 12, Matthew Edgar, is here. And the 2023 Iceland Masters champion as well. Let's get the full title as I re-enter the commentary box. 58. And it's nice to see Charlie back on stage, actually. He's, for me, feels like one of the voices of the Super Series. 120. Yeah, brilliant to have Charlie back here at the Live Lounge. We do have David the Duck back on the stage as well. 85. Did get to hear quite a lot about David the Duck. It's not something that he's planning on implementing permanently as in like a rebranding side of things, but it's something that is going to be a bit of a mascot moving 140. forward. 140. Danny required 122. Stay. Is Lowby here to stay in the context of getting through to finals night? He's going to need a push David today. Four points from his opening day. You sense a four from five days going to be a minimum. He's himself 32 after 12. Evans can't take out the 138. And so this is 58. for an Danny opening leg breaker throw for Lowby. Double Aim 16 the first leg. gets the Danny job Lowby. done. And so Danny Lowby on the board, leading by a leg to nil. And there is something about Danny Lowby in these situations. Second leg, that Danny to when he has to push, Game on. and when he's in these scenarios where he knows he's got to get something out of a day, you see a different side to it. Something just seems to click in Lowby in those particular moments. Maybe it's the same Danny Lowby that I was alluding to at the opening part of Monday's play when I was saying about how he had that focus and that determination. Maybe he's one of these players that sort of lose their way a little bit 41. after a defeat. It is a bit unusual playing group formats because you lose and then you've got to regroup and come back on. 91. Interesting to know how much sort of round-robin experience he has. 55. He does play outside of this. He's pretty much based now in the United Kingdom is Lowby. Plays a lot of ADC vault events, which is a truncated group stage 26. format. One hundred and five. This game yesterday. This is the one David Evans hit that 107 average in. It was a mighty fine performance. 52. Dan Lowby still managed to get a leg in that one, despite the 107 from stretch. Faulty. He's a long way off that pace at the moment. Well, it was a correlation of performances not marrying up to results. That first game against Robert Rickwood, 98.01. Average and in that game he raced into a three-one lead and next to no time 90. at all, but couldn't pick Danny up the points. One hundred and sixty. He's now got to res turn those performances 100. into results, into points. David Otherwise, he's going to be departing stage left come the end of today. Eighty-two left. 
Ball for double 16. Game to level for seedings. And you can David see what Evans. that meant to David Evans. A little bit of a G up in his celebration. And level we are after two breaks of throw at one apiece. Third leg, it's David to throw first. Game on. That was class, that there from David Evans. It's been a slower start than we had yesterday, but it's started now. That was 40. a brilliant try. I do love that when you want 82 and you go for the ball double 16. It just looks so good on the eye. 100. Talking about good on the eye. Let's have a look and see how the players' actions marry up. There's not really many components about the David Evans throw that can go wrong, really, is there? 99. Here's something I'm sort of looking into at the moment and really doing some studies on. 58. Working with a couple of people on this one about the height of a dart player and looking at what suits. And we are getting very close to a conclusion on that to work out what the perfect 57. ideal size of a dart player would be. So stay tuned for that answer. 140. Stay tuned for all the darts. It is a darty day, isn't it, today? Euro Tour, Super Series, you name it, you've got it today. 92. I imagine there's going to be some dual screen action as the day goes on. 65. Of the 21st century, eh? Absolutely. I don't think many people just watch one screen these days. So you remember when I was younger, it was the whole family around one screen and... 96. We Danny require 138. Nowadays, there's about five screens in the room. That's about iPads, iPhones, all the rest of it. 94. David require 170. 102 in the opening leg. Add into his 141 he took out yesterday. Can you make it a hat trick? Or big finishes? 77. Danny, you require 44. Not to be, and so will the musician be going loco in Al Capoco? 24. But if he misses that, he may Danny not be staying too 40. long. 40. One left. 30. The cry of Danny O. David. 20. As that final dart pulls inside, gifting loudly this. Second Game bite of the, the cherry at double ten, which he takes with a plum. It's officially a break aplon now. Three breaks of throw. Lowby leads two one. Fourth leg, it's Danny to throw first. You Game call on. Him the magician is that his nickname? One hundred. I swear you just called him the magician. Did I? Who? Did I call the magician? Does Danny Lowby have a nickname? Ninety six. We know he likes to incorporate the number two within 52. his logo, which I really like. That's in reference to the fact that he is the second phase of Dan Lowby. His dad, also Dan Lowby, a fine player in his day, played in the World Match Play, the World Championship, amongst other events around the world of darts. So that's why you'll see that sort of... 139. Roman numerals, they call it, with that numbering. I was for an interview on Monday, which we're going to be publishing soon on the Super Series YouTube channel. And he was very insistent that he is Danny Lowby the second, because that is what's on his birth certificate, 81. not Danny Lowby Jr. One hundred. It's good that he embraces that. I, I, I get what this is like. I had the exact same initials as my dad. So when we used to play darts, it was both M. Edgar, so I became M. J. Edgar. 57. Where Danny, you require 110. Danny seems to be fully embracing. 70. David, you require 127. We're going to have a second wave of 1, 2, 7 and game. Go on, Charlie. Oh, you nearly had the chance to say the line. Danny, you require 40. Game shot on the fourth leg. Danny Lowry. He's a big fan of the one two seven in game, and the time is one fifteen. Could you imagine the one two seven going at one two seven? Fifth leg. It's David to throw the end first. Of it. Game on. Well, it was a perfect day for David Evans yesterday. He didn't taste defeat. 
What's the entire session of action? 39. They taste it. At the very first game here. Unless he can turn this around. That The advantage of throw is certainly with David Evans. He only has to break once. 130. So although it looks like a big task at the moment, though he's got to win the next three legs, he will be throwing first in two of them. 58. And if we talk about urge, I don't want to keep 58. using the word pressure. Because I think at this point, Daniel Alves is probably not feeling pressure because he knows there's plenty of opportunity ahead of him and plenty of games. But 56. I think he's feeling a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency that David Evans probably finds isn't there. Right? It's probably a bit comfortable for David Evans at the moment. Top of the table, four points clear. Knows that if he loses this and the close in chasing pack, he'll still be two points clear at the top of the table. So he knows he's got a little bit of time on his hands. Well, Danny Lowby will be feeling as if David he's driving down the M25 in Russia, whilst David Evans might be thinking he's having a picnic in his local park. That'll be how the pair will be feeling right now. As he goes for double 12 for a 15 dart leg. 66. Doesn't go, but he has the luxury of time. One hundred and thirty-five. David, you require twelve. I'll be looking a bit frustrated there at the back end of this leg, thinking, "Where have you been for the whole time?" Game oh, shot on the big fifth last leg. There for David, David Evans. Evans. You mentioned it would be like being in the picnic. Had he missed that and Lauby gone out, he'd feel like he's gone to the picnic and forgot his sandwiches. Sick there. Gets Danny to throw first. Game on. Oh, is it not one of your picnic sandwiches for two pounds? <laughs> one hundred and forty. Fifty-nine. So loud beat with the darts in this leg to get the job 59. done. Fifty-nine. He's been in these positions before in this group. And he hasn't been able to execute them. Case in point, the first game yesterday against Robert Rickwood. 140. Who we're going to see next against Charlie Large. 44. I don't know if Charlie Large has got a nickname, has he? He could go down the old Wes Newton road and just be giving it. 162. Well, but we've got a new nickname. 45. David, you require 140. I said the hardest task David Evans had in turning this one around would be that one breaker throw. He has done that in the scoring 92. phase. 92. Which means if this goes all the way, it's going to be advantage Evans. 97. David, you require 48. This happened to Lauby yesterday in the opening game. He went 3-1 up and ended up losing. And he was the dominant force in the match. It's one more at double 16 with Lauby waiting on 116. 16. It doesn't go. Danny, you require And so Lauby to get the job done and to move him on to six points, he'll be level with second place in the group. Park 92. on that for a moment. Insert David, David Evans 32. here. Double 16 for a level game. 's himself the caller David moves over to Southampton. Can he get round it? No score. He's somehow gone under the outer ring. Danny, you require 24. Game shot. Double 12 will match. get the job done Danny for Danny Lauby. And it puts him second place in the table. As he gets the better of David Evans. The first defeat for Stretch in this group. It is Lauby who runs out a 4-2 winner.
is never straightforward on a Friday at the Super Series and David Evans has just found that out winning all of his matches yesterday but losing his opener today Evans missing 14 darts at double during that game and Danny Lauby taking full advantage to move his points tally to six in Group C next match features Charlie Large and he needs a big day if he's going to get himself into the conversation he takes on Robert Rickwood, who was second before just being leapfrogged by Lauby, Large realistically needs to win this game and maybe even the rest of them as well to get through. Rickwood, though, looking to solidify a top two spot. To talk you through this one in commentary, it's Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Yes, it's the latest superhero of the Super Series in attendance. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Ton Man, and he's here in the building. Robert Rickwood in action up against Charlie Large. And in case you're wondering what on earth we're on about in the country box, it was because yesterday leg, Robert Charlie Rickwood to took out five Game finishes, on. bang on the nose of a ton, in completely differing circumstances. He just loved that finish. He just loves playing at the Super Series. He just loves darts. And we enjoy watching him, Matt. 93. And I'd just like to take this moment to fully distance myself from Tunman. <laughs> that is not a commentary boxing. That is a Henry Deacon. 60. Invention and moment. But yeah, he was very good on that area. He took it out with two double tops a couple of times as well. So be interesting to see if he 57. gets on again. Been quite cheery in the venue this morning. Not complained about anything. Been 121. Yeah, I'm being ironic, yeah. He did ask what on earth the Tub Man thing was about. 99. Here he was watching the games back. He actually said I misquoted him very slightly. Because I said that he mentioned he taught David Evans everything he knows. He says... No, I didn't. It says we played in the same team. He goes, but I don't like him. Bit of needle. David Evans was faulty right there at the moment. He says it's a bit of a love-hate relationship because I love him and he hates me. They will be taking each other on. Just a game's time. 84. That's a Charlie Large debut day yesterday. You know, it was a very proud one for 140. him and his family. And if you're looking to make a little bit of a kick on on Friday, regardless of how the qualification pans out and things like that, if you're hoping to have as good a day as possible, 95. Charlie you requires something 72. really to shout about come the conclusion of the day's play. So he feels like he's going to have to take it out because look what Rick was left on. Double 16 is not going to go, Robert, and he may not come 100. back, because guess what Robert Wick was left?
one on the nose. He did this five times yesterday. He's not going to do it the first leg of today. 80. Charlie, you require 32. How ironic would that have been in the opening leg of the match? That's a long way off for Charlie Large, and it's a little bit awkward. The doubles, we said, was possibly his strong point yesterday. 16. And all three of them a long Robbie way off. Robbie required 20. Almost looked like nervy darts there from Charlie Large. Three double one. Can't go any further than this. 18. Can't go any Charlie further. Charlie requires 16. And he find himself behind. It's been a tentative first leg from both. Same problem. The way his darts kick to the side. Look at that. Completely blocked up the bed. And he hits the flight. Keep going, Charlie. Keep going. Onto the balcony, maybe. 11. No way through. Robert, you require two. Absolutely to. no way. Completely blocked that up with material. But is he going to get away with it? No score. He does. Charlie, you require five. Five missed starts here from Robert Rickwood. Seven from Charlie Large. And if he is feeling a little bit nervous, when you get away with these legs, they really do settle you because you just think... Game you get away with a few bits leg. here today. Charlie Maybe Large. I don't need to be perfect to win this. It was 27 darts. He Second leg, it's Robert to throw really first. Didn't really want to engage there with Robert Rickwood, which I do like. I'm a fan of that. But the doubles was kind of a strength for him yesterday. 36.36%, which is well above what we say is the standard for the Super Series of 33%. Can I just say, when you get away with legs like that, you can often just completely relieve the pressure of the day and think, I don't need to be perfect. 91. And then it just starts to happen. He opens with a max. He went seven deep into the nine yesterday. 134. We've seen glimpses of real brilliance from Charlie Large, and I suppose today he'll be hoping to kind of he sat jigsaw together. The glitch we did see was really impressive. But Rick has got the rock on the back of his shirt at the moment. He's playing 43. more like paper. Charlie, looking like at the moment, he's the scissors. I still don't understand how 66. that works. 66. Charlie required 144. Normally what happens is you have a game of rock, paper, scissors, and then whatever they do, you chuck in the curveball of the old dynamite, and then you just win anyway, because dynamite beats everything. So does rock bait beat... Uh, we'll carry on in the next leg, I think, about that one. Charlie Large leads 50 after 12, Charlie and this is 50. for the break of throw and a 2-0 lead, and it's been a contrast to the opening leg. Hoping to get it done on double 16 yeah, this time. The second leg. And how many times Charlie does that Large. happen? Where we have a leg where it gets a little bit squiffy in terms of missed doubles. And then next time round, in the next leg, it Third goes first time of asking. Charlie Large, 14 dart leg to open up a 2 0 lead. Well, look at the one from David Evans yesterday. He took out a 1 4 1 after a 35 one dart leg. 180. Again, he opens up with a max. The memories of that first leg seem a long time ago for 31. Charlie Large. Whereas Robert Rickwood. Seems to be still in that place. He missed five darts. Two 93. handfuls where he's visited the board with a single outshot in mind. And he's just not been able to recover from that. He's on the slide. Put it this way. 29. Since that opening leg, Charlie Large is at a couple of maxis and a 140. Say so Rickwood's on the slide. He's, it's like he's on the slide, but he's greased himself up as well. He's 96. going down in quick. At the Gloucester cheese rolling contest. And after that first leg, the fact that Charlie could bring his Charlie average up to around 82, probably nine miss doubles in that first leg, says a lot about how he's improved since then. And he looks as if he's going to race into a 3 0 lead next to no time at all because Robert Wick was un 45. been unable to provide the sort of opposition in this game. That's exactly it. They're 
There is no opponent right now for Charlie. One hundred. Charlie require eighty-seven. He's just at the moment completing a fixture. In his own pace at his own leisure. Right now, really, this is 55. Just Charlie Large versus Charlie Large's thoughts. If you're Danny Lowby, 66. you are watching Charlie every Macquarie, single 32. part of this and thinking, yes, please. If you're Yuri Brewer, you're watching every bit of this and thinking, yes, please. Charlie Large is playing this game and he's thinking. 16. Not that time. Fifty three. Charlie requires sixteen. That's not blocking it like the ones earlier. Got the bottom end of the bed here that you can go for. No score. Just trying to Robbie requires one hundred and twenty two. Did step slightly to the right, which I just opened it up a bit. Is this a kickstart of a Rickwood? Fifty four. It's just not happening. Charlie requires darts sixteen by Rickwood. He's still not down to a double. However, game shot on the third. Large leg. finds that double Charlie two. That Large. could have got very awkward again if he missed that. He's freeing it up. It's not been a classic, but points are points Fourth at the leg. Super it's Series. To throw first. Game on. He was quite fortunate that they didn't hit the 13 because that was not a well thrown dart. There was a lot of snatch in that visit. And you saw there, like right on Easy the wire one. and away from that double four, could easily have slipped in the 13. So big, big credit there to Charlie Large to make the adjustment down to the double two. 140. A successful adjustment down to the double two. And as serious as it sounds, the way that Robert's playing, the first visitor legs for Charlie Large have been 26. good. And that's what's been affording him opportunities. He's kicked off 140 in this leg. And that visit on its own, the way Robert's playing at the minute, could just well be enough. He's scratching 96. his head on the way back. He's confused. He's puzzled. He's probably been in the practice room throwing like he did yesterday, averaging 86.23. 83. Five ton plus checkouts, three 180s. End average of 93 when he left the stage yesterday and went back to his hotel. He's probably been doing all of that in the practice room. He's got up there and it's not happening. And he's thinking, why? And he'll be getting frustrated. 140. this is a game that hasn't got away from him without opportunity. He's 3-0 down, but Charlie is not pulling away and making this an impossible mountain to 56. climb. 56. Robert Rickwood right now needs to find the climbing gear. Charlie's been the most able to settle amongst the myriad of madness. 100. Charlie required 152. Although it would be totally ironic if this game is won with a 152, which it's not. And so Rickwood's going to return 71 to get his first leg of the day on the board and just give Charlie something to think 100. about. 100. Robert, you require 71. Just checking with the referee what he scored. It was 39 to leave him double 16. 55. Two more missed darts. And Charlie they might be the last darts 52. that he throws in this match. For a thumping 4-0 success. Double eight. 36. Comes and goes. Robert, he he has missed 16. 18 darts a double in this match. Will he get the opportunity to have more to win it in this leg? Mightily close. Eight. But close. Charlie no requires reward. 16. And you feel like that is it for Robert Rickwood. Again, those awkward darts covering the bed. Rickwood probably thinks this is going in. You get into that mode where you're expecting Game, what shots, a dart for Charlie Large. He moved all Large. the way over to Southampton, came around those and ended up finding a double. A 4-0 success for Charlie Large to kick off his day and kicking off their day. Coming up next is Yuri Brewer and Mal Cumming.
welcome back. A large win for Charlie Large in his first match of the second day. Couldn't have been bigger. 4 0 against Robert Rickwood. Both players missing bucket loads of doubles, really reflected in the averages there. But Large won't care about that. He gets the points and keeps himself in contention. Well, next, it's a fifth meeting of the week between the Dutchman Yuri Brewer and Australia's Mal Cumming. It was the Aussie who won the first three of those fixtures, but Brewer's success yesterday put him in the mix for the top two and left his opponent tiptoeing across the tungsten tightrope. No safety net today. Would he fall or cling on? Let's find out in the company of Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. Well, Yuri Brewer, it was a much improved day for him yesterday. And he'll be hoping to continue those signs going into Friday. As first for leg, it's Yuri Mal to Cumming, first. Well, Game on. When you visit these shores all the way from Australia, the last thing you want to do is for your week to peter out. And he'll be hoping that he can put in some kind of flurry towards the end of 43 proceedings and hope maybe it's good enough. And if not, he can be really pleased with his efforts over his five days. 125. I don't know about you, but maybe the first couple of days in Group A have uh, come to affect him. As I say, there was probably one or two. I say, when you're new to this, and we're talking about Yui Buren now, how he's kind of spent the first three days, you know, new to this type of atmosphere, new to this type of environment, and Yesterday, it felt as if he was more settled, more at home with proceedings. He's certainly grown into it as it went on. And that is something that we spoke about on day one, if you remember. We said Yuri Brewer is going to undoubtedly be nervous. He never played anything like this before. And then sort of grown into it as the week's gone on. Certainly yesterday, the, the results he got, three results. So massive improvement over the two results. He got over 15 matches across Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Apologies about that. Don't quite know 58. what happened there, but whatever it is has been rectified and sorted. Eighty one. Ninety five. And okay, this is the final game in the first round of. Fixtures for our Friday afternoon session here. And because of that defeat for Rickwood, because of that win for Lowby, now Cumming wins this game. 45. You know, three players on six, two players on four. And David Evans sitting pretty as a duck at the top. But is. 84. David Evans, after losing his first game and producing... One of the worst performances he has so far this 96. week. 96. Now you require 170. at the top of the table. Don't go there again. It's you who started all this, Edgar. 90. You require 164. Triple 18. We left the balls. I come and comes back for 80. 96. Now you require 80. I had a feeling if someone's going to make a bit Game of a charge, it's going to be Mal Cumming. Mal Cumming. He has been so close to having a good week here. Second leg, it's and Mal to throw first. Game with on. that feeling that it may have got away from him already, we might see him start today. 100. Like a bull in a china shop. 60. I haven't quite yet worked out a nickname for Yuri Brewer yet, have we? 59. I'm sure we're not the two people to ask about that because coming up in our next game, we've got the duck against Tom. 81. <laughs> Who says you can't have fun at work, eh? 97. 
60. Fifty seven. One hundred and forty. Well, is the Edgar Crystal Ball coming out? He's living up to it. Nice and early in this one, Mal coming. Mal, you require forty six after fifteen darts. Game shot on the second so leg. Much better Mal Mal coming. Coming. The average of eighty eight is what he was doing across his Group A campaign. Third, it's Yuri to throw first. The average eighty eight across on. those three days. His best day being on Tuesday when it was nearly a ninety one. Only won one of those matches. One hundred and forty. What he's able to do in this one is he's able to turn those stats and those same numbers into results, and the reason for that is those two from two on the doubles. 80. 80 and a 46. Two of those lower combination shots, but games that can really separate 96. you from your opponent. Now then. 83. I'm just wondering whether... And we've had a deeper look, haven't we, at, at Mal Cummings' performances in, in various 100. different events. And it feels like his best stuff becomes apparent when he's in an environment he feels relaxed in, an environment he feels he's more at home with now. He's played here for four days. This is day five, and he should feel more at home with the surroundings and, and things like that. And maybe because of it, we're, we're seeing the true effect of Mal Cumming. Now you're requiring 98. We're seeing the Mal Cumming that's playing in that DPA tour and reaching quarterfinals and beyond or in pretty much all of them. Is the player rank Yuri, on that system. 72. Some real fine talent as well on that. Game shot that on the is third a mightily leg. fine Yuri finish Brewer. there from Yuri Brewer. Yet to see a dart missed at a double in this one, which is a complete contrast to the game Fourth we've leg. just seen. Fourth leg, to throw first. Game on. I hope this doesn't come across in the wrong way. But it's something about players like Yuri Brewer, who's 100. going on a bit of a journey here this week, which... I find quite fascinating because you wa you're watching a player develop 58 and learn in front of your own eyes and there's I don't know just something about that for me there's a lot about the super series you get the 81. best players of course outside that sitter but you also get players like you who's got such aspirations and it's his first big opportunity we're seeing him learn a lot we see it as well even from players that have got a lot of experience or established because they play here for so many games like a crash course and darts on the telly. And I mean, just take Luke Littler last week. We, we know how quality is. We know all the things he's won and played in and 45. where his career is going. But didn't we last week learn a little bit more and see that development of his game as he turned into a bit of a cheeky chappy, really, with those ball-ball ball combination. Ball 11, ball. Naughty darts. You can try to go bull, bull, bull. 43. Mario sounds like a Venga Boys track. That's for the bull. He's looking to climb the ladder. But he's missed the big number. AC. Would that suggest he fell off the ladder? I haven't quite thought that bit through 134. Where's the blade? There's a claim. 40. The blame was fully on Malcolm in missing the big 20. He bends the wire on the tops. It's a smaller target. He switched it. 30. It was a long way off that tops. The first one completely bent the wire down. 96. Mal, you require 10. You will have another opportunity. Just next door at the double five. These are the moments that win games. Game shot on the fourth leg. This is what Malcoming is doing differently so far today. Taking those opportunities. He's a leg away from the match. Fifth leg, it's Yuri to throw first. And when Game he on. went down for that double two, it felt like there could be the potential that the woe of yesterday was going to set in again here. 100. But this is a different man today. And I suppose it's, it's, it's a man with absolutely no pressure on his shoulders. 
He would have been disappointed with yesterday. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But the expectation on his shoulders ain't going to be big. And so because of that, he could play that bit of freedom. And when you play that bit of freedom, it just allows you to relax and play with a bit more of a flow. 83. We have noted that he seems to play his best stuff when he plays at a higher pace. He sort of dips in and out of rhythms at 60. times. 60. Sometimes be guilty of being a little bit too deliberate. 45. Sixty. Seventy. You require one hundred and forty-one. This is a shot we've seen already this week. David Evans converting that one. Fifty-five. Needs to be thought about here, Malcolm. He didn't. You require 86. Switch downstairs there would have left him a finish. Still had the opportunity to hit the treble to bring it down. 46. He's not in a position to pounce on that mistake. Counting error from Malcolm. 83. Yuri requires. So to bring it back to 3 2. Burl wants tops. Set up nicely on the wire. But no he score. cannot find a route to home. And that might be Mal the last dart he throws 80. in this game because Mal Cumming returns for 80 to pick the points up. It's going to be the solitary dart at tops. 40. But he can't seal Yuri the deal right 40. here. He opened the match with 80 finish. He had the chance to finish the match with an 80 finish. He still have the opportunity because if Brewer can hit this double turn, 30. which he cannot. Now you require his three match starts. Mal coming to double his points tally. Game. And he shots. gets it with the last the one match. in hand. Mal he joins coming. Charlie Large on four points at the bottom of the table. Good start from the players at the bottom. A 4 1 success there on Mal coming, but we go back to the top of the table in our next game, Robert Rickwood and David Evans. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate darts experience. Meet the dart stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. 
Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back. It's been a really interesting start to the action here at the Super Series on Friday. The bottom three beating the top three in the first three matches of the session. That after Mal Cumming got that victory before the break. They're 4-1 over Yuri Brewer. We can see the numbers from that game. Mal averaging around the 80 mark in that. Brewer missing six, six starts at double and made to pay for those. He could have stayed in the match at least a little longer. But he's still very much in the race as far as finishing in the top two is concerned. We'll take a look at the table now. And yesterday, David Evans, well, he was head and shoulders above everybody. But if he loses this next match to Robert Rickwood, it could be fingers and toes time in terms of working out the permutations in this group because Large and Cumming have both won and put themselves in the conversation. As I said, though, it is David Evans against Robert Rickwood in the next match. And we are going to have a look at how the players compared with their performances yesterday. Evans, of course, winning all of his matches. And you can see there a massive percentage of legs won for him, more than 70%. Rickwood himself winning more than half of the legs he played, but actually had a higher checkout success rate than David Evans. Took out those five tons, as Henry keeps telling us in commentary. Uh, but the average for David Evans really standing out, more than 90.5 for him. Did lose his first match, however, today. Can he put things right? Or will Rickwood turn up? and beat his close friend and rival on the hockey. Let's find out in this battle of the Lancastrians with Henry and Matthew Edgar. Did Chris Murphy just say close friend? I had a conversation with him this morning. They wouldn't agree. Robert Rickwood says he hates him. Played in the same team together. I misquoted him yesterday and said that he told me David Evans, everything he knew. I think they might be sharing together because they both was having a bit of a laugh about that one this morning. But David Evans describes it as a love-hate relationship. He loves Robert and Robert hates him. Chief, it's a bit similar to us in the commentary box. I've taught you everything here in the commentary box not to do. You learn from good and bad people. First leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. For Robert, he hasn't had long to recover from the first game. It was a disappointing performance. We won't go into any further 60. detail than that. Is he one of those that can just go back in the practice room, forget about it and go again? Or would it have just dwelled on the mind a little bit? 57. Knowing Robert, he would have gone back, he'd have made a few comments... He'd have probably had a little wonder and then got over it pretty quickly. 100. And this is probably the ideal group because there are some practice rooms and there are certain people that like to insert themselves into a practice room and love AC. a bit of practice room etiquette that would probably have been reminding Robert Rickwood of that game ever since he got back to the practice room, especially if he was David Evans in this situation, you were going to play him next. One hundred eighty. Right, it's already an inflamed performance from Rickwood here. One forty, one eighty. This has got all about Robert, the turmoil and troubles against Large. Oh, Ninety-six. He wanted to be one-two-one man. He wanted to upgrade the superpower. 97. Robert, you require 25. I love 25. Could give you a lot of insight into a player, how they think about the board and what their preferred routes are. Game shot on the first leg. All an option. Robert Rickwood. Robert Rickwood, who couldn't hit a double in 10 darts in the opening game, gets one. Nice and early Second leg, it's David to throw first. This is game on. First dart. At a double on the outer ring, the missed out of the bullseye will also count against those stats, but talking about 
the one on the outer ring there. It's much better. 180. Evans with his first max after not really being competitive in the first leg. And there will be a point where, despite the position Evans was in at the start of the day, if he goes naught from two to begin with, possibly panic stations may begin to creep in. 93. Because you'd see Wick would go on to eight. Lauby can join him on that if he gets a better of Mal coming. 43. And so could Yuri Brewer if he gets a better of Charlie Large. And suddenly he'll feel as if this whole group is caving in on him. 140. Well, the easiest way to stop all those problems from happening is just to turn up in the same way he did yesterday and... To just nine darts here. Leaves himself 88. 60. David to require 88. Shot which a little over a week ago was a £20,000 shot. 52. Just have a little glance across there. Seeing what Rickwood was on. It was safe to not have to chase down the bullseye approach. That is something that he did learn as well from his time on the PDC Pro Tour. 65. David, you require 36. Don't get yourself in a mess. Leave what you want. He's chose the 18s. Let me see him bust here. 28. Hops to leave himself the double four, which is just one notch down on the lap of doubles. 140. David, you require 8. Double two. Game shot on the second leg. He's found. David it's Evans. in. It's there. And it's one apiece. We mentioned third there leg, about it's David to Evans. Throw first. Game on. The last couple of years on the PDC Pro Tour, he alludes to the fact that it was a lot harder than he expected it to be and the results didn't quite go his way. But there are a couple 28. of things that went his way. He very narrowly missed out on a second world championship appearance. He went in the PDPA tour card holder qualifier. 93. William Borland, Ricardo Pietretsko, Connor Scott, before losing to Richie Burnett, who did take that position at the Alexandra Palace. 119. But coming towards the back end of his time on the PDC Pro Tour, Players Championship number 29. There is a significant 97. result. That was on the 4th of November 2022 when he beat the PDC world champion and world number one Michael Smith. 140. So at that period of time was in top form. He won the Grand Prix, the Grand Slam, sorry, won the Grand Slam and then went on to win the world championship. And in the midst 85. of that, in the middle of that sandwich of great results, David Evans was able to turn him over in the meet. However, we've got to be very fair and impartial in this commentary position. There's also been some rugby defeats in that pro tour last year. He even lost to some guy called Matthew Edgar. Well, quite a lot of people have been doing that recently. The, <laughs> 100. the recent Group B champion. Well, you're 90. Iceland Masters champion. Will certainly be 50. challenging David. David you require 126. Best looking man in darts award. Not voted for by me. It's a be a vote of yes for Evans. The bullseye Robert, doesn't go. And so 40. Rickwood returns for tops, which is, well, it was a valiant friend to him yesterday. Double 10. Oh, for fives. Game shot. Fives the, the fives. Way. To lead 2 1. Suddenly, he's halfway towards the victory post. Fourth leg, it's David to throw first. Things Game can get on. a bit interesting. I mentioned yesterday that Robert Rickwood taught David Evans everything he knows. 140. There's one thing he's doing right now is teaching him a lesson. One hundred. 
Bevins isn't careful here. If it will can convert this into a result. 41. I'm going to say it. David Evans at the top of the table becomes a sitting duck. We've got too many ducks around here. Seventy one. To be fair, Robert Rickwood yesterday I heard him on the way out, he says if he takes that duck up on the stage against me again tomorrow. Ninety six with a stamp on it. That was my Robert Rickwood impression. To be fair, the only thing that's being stamped on by Robert Rickwood at the minute has been his authority on this match. One hundred. That may not last much longer. 140. Excellent visit there from Evans. Leave himself an 84 after 12. And so, Rickwood here needs to come up with something big. 100. David, you require 84. La Ball. 59. Robert, no you require bosh. 130. And so, the mini fish. Well, you couldn't even get the first fillet. 40. David, you and require 25. So Evans 25. returns for a level game at two apiece, wanting 25. Two eights. For two, two. Game and Desmond shot the it is. Play. David Evans. Two apiece between Rickwood and Evans and a big best of three to come. Fifth leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. Have you ever been out with Robert Rickwood before? Once. Did you pay? No, there is a, there is a, there is a story. There's <laughs> always a story with Robert. There always is, and it normally involves you getting your wallet out. Not on this occasion, he said, Go on, chap. Whatever you want, 96. but I want the change. He bought you something. Wow. I feel left out. 65. He did correct me as well yesterday. I said to him, I quoted yesterday that he said £3 was the ideal amount he'd pay for a breakfast. He actually said he would nowadays, with inflation, £4, 5p. Very specific about the 5p. He obviously knows somewhere he can go for breakfast for £4, 5p, and to him that's the, the standard. 140! Stories of the tours and the events. The, I mean, I'm not going to go into the ones I've got with David Evans. One of them involves Germany... A bath full of baked beans 57. and a prawn cocktail crisp sandwich. Hopefully not all at the same time. Yeah, that one's just going to stay to the imagination. I don't want letters from Ofcom again. 100. Instantly, how much did you pay for breakfast? 91. That's what it is, really. Robert, you require 150. I can stretch beyond the £4.5 P of Robert Rickwood. He won't be taking the 115. Set it up handy. 75. Forcing David, David you require Evans 160. Take his biggest check out of the week. 100. Biggest one we've seen so far was the 128. From Lee Cox. Robert, you require 40. In group A. This one, not as big as that, but we'll get the point on the board for Robert Wickwood. Down to double ten. Up to the fives. He's chasing it around. 30. And he's frustrated. David required 32. Evans looking to step in and break the throw. Game shot on the fifth push leg. himself one David leg Evans. away from a very vital two points. It was all getting a bit... Nervy and ropey there for David Sixth Evans. Day, he was getting himself into first. a position of game on of doubt, a, a position of fear. 
but it could be a case of fear not. 99. Rick would certainly settle the better in this one than he did his first. That might be due to the fact he's playing someone he's very familiar with, someone he's played county with and 140. local darts. They're both also playing the Lancashire Super League. Different teams. Now, this is the overhead 96. camera. This is where we get to have a real good look at how the darts enter the ball from a trajectory angle. 40. And we get to see a bounce out from a very good angle as well. And it just clashed into those darts. Didn't quite have the lift on the angle of entry to allow that one to come underneath. It looks like a bit of running repairs. I don't think this is going to be as quick as you get with the old Formula One cars. Maybe done at a slightly lesser pace. I don't know. Have you seen the Ferrari team recently? I don't know. He's using all different parts of the body. He's got bits in his mouth. He's got bits in both hands. This is quite an impressive watch here, watching Robert Rickwood uh, change this around. Uh, what we tend to see as well now is a lot of people will have that already set up, like the flight and the stem combination together, because if you do get a little bit nervous and the hand's a bit shaky, you become very aware trying to put that flight in between the prongs of the of the stem. Forty one. So if you are a David person that suffers with a little bit of nerves, have that set up already. Then all you gotta do is just unscrew and untwist and twist it back in. So fifty seven. A couple of weeks ago. Someone down here went a step further and just had a replacement dart. And they just changed the dart. Obviously, suffered really a little bit of the old shaky hands. 81. David, you require 110. If you can't control what's happening to you, control how you happen. 54. Talking about control, Evans is a what, two darts away potentially from 4 2 in, which really would put him in control because it would put him. Even if only temporarily, six points clear of the rest of the field in this particular group. David, you require 56. But we're hot on his heels on 66, but this for the match. Tops is what Evans wants. And Game Tops is what Evans gets the match, to open David up Evans. that six-point buffer on the rest of the group. And he is oh so nearly there towards tomorrow night. He failed to make it last time. He's on the verge this time. David and his lucky duck make it, well, a dozen wins in this group.
So David Evans takes a step closer to qualifying for Saturday night with that victory over Robert Rickwood. 4-2 in the favour of the league leader and he is running away at the top of the table despite defeat in his first match today. Order restored for Evans with that one. And coming next is a huge match for particularly Mal Cumming who takes on Danny Lauby. In terms of how the pair played yesterday, well, there was a, a notable difference in Lauby's favour, really, in just about every metric. Lots of tonnes from coming, but as you can see, Lauby with more 140s, more maximums, a much higher average and a better checkout success rate. The stats, though, of course, count for nothing ahead of Friday's fight, which is really a four-pointer. A big win could actually see coming move up four places from bottom to second, but defeat could, as good as, rule the Aussie out of finals night. Two men who definitely will be there. We'll talk you through this one. Over to Matt and Henry. I'm always there on Saturday night, Murph. Danny Lauby up against Mal Cumming. They both want to be there. Danny Lauby tends to make it to Saturday night when he's here at the Super Series. He lost out last time in the semi-finals in an incredible game against Jack Main. Lauby averaging 104, but it wasn't enough for him to get over the line. First leg, gets Danny to throw first. Game on. And Look, we said in, in his first game of the day that he needs a big push, he needs a big run, but when he knows that there's a sense of urgency, he tends to deliver. And we saw 60. signs of that in his opening game against what had to be said was a bit of a under par David Evans. Well, it was certainly one of the David Evans we've been seeing across yesterday. That David Evans now has opened up a nice sizable lead at the top of the table. So you feel like it's playing for second position. Which is kind of how it felt at the start of the group anyway. So nothing really learned. 180. I say nothing really learned. I think one thing we did 59. learn was Mal coming. Could still disturb this party. He was throwing some good darts in the opening game. 100. Victory here will pull him right back into the mix. 140. Mal, you require 81. And start this is 81 after 9 against the darts. The ball for the ball. 56. Danny, you require 149. It's on. Trouble 19. Double 16. Yeah, what a finish from Dan Lauby. Danny Lauby. He said that when the chips are down, he produces. The chips was down. He produced his very best. Second there, leg. It's to throw first. The best Game on. finish he has had so far this week. 140. He had to produce it amidst the scoring onslaught for Mal Cumming, who missed a dart at the bullseye on the back of the 81. 100. Last time Danny Lab was here, he made it to Saturday night and he put a big contingent with him. A popular player, one of the 100. most popular players out in the United States and making a bit of a name for himself over here in the United Kingdom now. Goals and ambitions are to make it onto the PDC Pro Tour sooner rather than later. And again, there was going to be an interview. With him, that is going to be released on the Super Series YouTube channel 60. in due course. Now you require be broadcast on this program. All about that. Forty-six. One hundred and forty. Mal, you require ninety-four. He survived a bit of a barrage from Mal Cohen, then came up with a big score just to leave things handy before then taking out the one four nine. But is he going to get a go at the one oh one? Game shot. Because Cumming comes back with a ninety-four. This is a high-quality contest. One apiece. Both legs one in fifteen darts. Third leg Both legs one with first. decent finishes. Game on. That was a statement there 97. from Mal Cumming. And Lauby took that 149 out, and you probably say he had to at the time. Mal Cumming didn't dwell on 81. it. 81. Straight back at him, 15 data. 140. These games where 
you see Mal coming against one of the faster players here, like Dan Lauby, you can see that visible pace 60. change, which tends to promote better darts with Mal. 140. Start on the next leg, we'll show the averages because they are stupendous. 140. Danny required 124. Been eight 140s and a max in this game, and we are in leg three. We may be done with leg three. 84. The Lauby will set up. Sensible play to leave tops after 12. 100. Danny required 40. Double 10. Game shot on to the go third two one up. Danny Lowby. And it's been a highly impressive match. The averages res reflect a very good standard Although, of play. 102.5 for Lowby. 104.46 are now coming. And both players, 50% when it comes towards the finishing. Two from four for 85. the American. And one from two for the Australian. 150. These are the games where... We expect that the players can sort of drop the ball a little bit. 140. In the short format game when the points are vital. Not oh, these two. These two are bringing their best. 140. Did mention that about Lowby. That he sort of really does bring his best when he needs his best. 85. Eighty one. One hundred and thirty one. Ninety. Now you require sixty. A fourth hole to throw in a row here, Mal coming. Tops. 20. Mini Danny opportunity. requires 75. Should get a dart of tops himself. It will be. 55. Oh, he's come very low. Now you require 40. You can see the disappointment. He's signalling. Maybe it wasn't sat in the hand right. Game shot on the fourth leg. Go in. Mal coming. To a level match. That 17 dart leg was the worst leg of the match. The legs prior. Fifth leg. It's Danny to throw first. Was on Game in on. the space of 14, 15, 15. That's how good this one's been. 40. And was it John Park always mentions when on commentary? He always says a good cane can be judged on the 45. amount of legs that have been won in 15 darts or fewer. 81. Because it means that at no point has mediocrity been allowed to Win through. 100. And you'd expect that it shows a good level of control. 140. If you go in with the throw. Very, very hard to break that. It means you've got to be 12 or less. That's sort of the pattern we've seen so far in this game. 45. 60. However, this could be a tight turning leg because... 25. Now it's had a few struggles here and Lauby hoping to set up as nicely as possible to move him into a 3-2 lead. Although that first dart is sat horribly for him. 100. He did well to find a treble from that point. 135. Danny require 80. To go a leg away. Tops. Now, how awkward is that? 60. Fairly. Danny require 150. Judging by the look and reaction of the American ace there. Now, Lalby started this game of a 149. Game coming coming is going to break for a 151. How pivotal could that be? 
Now be Mr. Darnit Charts are going three to up himself. And on. now Mal coming as the darts for the match. And that is why I feel this is the man that could make a move 100. today from off the pace. Because he just has that little bit of difference today, that little bit of timing. 180. He's going to have to keep finding it. Lalby is not done yet. 45. First maximum of the match for him. He's ninth of the group. 100. 21st of the week. You know when Lalby's in the mood, right? Watch that. Bite of the bottom lip when he throws. Next time he's at the board. 100. Here we go. Watch him. Watch him. Just look at that. Look at that lip. 45. That is a look. That is a snarl of determination. A bit like that of his North American compatriot, John Part. Oh, I don't think there's a better snarl 100. than John Part, especially when he had two treble 20s in already. We've just seen him take out 100. the 151. Now you require 156 one for the match. 100. Danny done the requires next best thing. 76. He's left it handy. He's left it with a simple two data. And another dot missed from Lauby at top. Now you require 56. Offers the invitation. For Mal coming to make it two from two. Tops. Now double ten. Steps back. Recomposes. And game finds the match winning the match. double. Mal a game coming. which hinged on a 1-5-1 one, one checkout to break the Lauby foe who had a dart at tops for a 3-2 lead. And Mal coming gets the pedal of Danny Lauby by four legs to two. And now things get very interesting in that race for a finals night place. Welcome back and what a set of results we are experiencing so far today at the Super Series. The last one, 
no different. Mal Cumming getting his second win of the day, a 4-2 success over Danny Lauber, who averaged 96 almost in that and took out a 1-4-9 finish, but Cumming hit back a 1-5-1, an average for himself of 93.29 and some really high scoring in there as well. And it means that it's very congested. And in fact, if Charlie Large wins this next match, we will have five players on six points in this group. He takes on Yuri Brewer. We'll have a look at how the pair's stats compare for yesterday. You can see actually Brewer have a very, very good checkout success rate. Give him a chance and he will take it. A slightly higher average than Large as well. More maximums though for Charlie in that department. He was pretty good, of course, had seven perfect darts at one point. So this is interesting. These players are fifth and sixth in the table, but either of them could be second after this match. We will go through all the permutations around three o'clock with Matthew Edgar, but this one about to get underway. And Matthew is with Henry in commentary. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, this is getting very dramatic, isn't it? here in Group C, but that's the way we like it here at the Modus Super Series. Now, the Charlie Large, after that opening success against Rick Wood, he could really first play himself back Charlie into to first. contention. As for Yuri Brewer, he gets victory in this one. Well, you have to say that he's in the box seat, potentially, for that second position in the group. 93. The conversation of genuinely didn't think we'd be having at the end of Wednesday's play when Yuri Brewer took part in Group A. 59. Just 78 across that group with 25% on his doubles, only winning two of his matches and just looked a little bit off the pace. 134. He has grown into the week as it has gone and he could be second in the table. 45. And that would be on points, not on legs. It's already on six, so this kind of a game in hand on those players, Malcoming, Robert Rickwood and Danny Lauby are up there already. 58. So a big, big game for, well, the, the veteran of the two, despite being 47. 20 years old, is the oldest one on stage. Charlie Large, just 18 years old. Remember I mentioned yesterday about the Moreno Blom theorem? First time he was here, really struggled in Group 8. Then managed to find a way of getting through the finals night. Could it be the case here for Yuri Bu? Although he's going to have to find an inflation of scoring Charlie a bit like that. Large finding himself first to the finish on 1-2-6. He's going to get six from here. So let's be looking to leave it set up as hardly as possible. 75 scored. 94. He's himself on... 32 after 15. 140. Charlie required 32. For 1-0 lead. He hasn't dropped a leg so far today, Charlie Game Large. The first leg. And so that Charlie Large. is going to be 5-0 and in that particular department. Second leg, it's I Yuri to throw first. I earlier on Game today on. that I weren't sure if he's got a nickname. I've had communication from... 140. One of his fellow players who also takes part here in the Super Series, Adam Lipscomb. 119. Who, let me know that his name's apparently Sun Pat Smooth Peanut Butter. 140. I feel there's a story here. And I'm just looking up that exact one. I thought maybe they've 58. got like a... Like a cartoon character he looks like or something. I'm not seeing it. 125. Here, which I would like to hear if anyone knows the reasoning behind that one. So hold on. We've got Tun Man, Duck Man, 85. Yuri and Peanut Butter Man in this group. Twenty-five. Yes. Totally normal day. It is here. It is when you're around the darts. 139. You're in required 71. With a muffin wearing boxing gloves on his shirt. 51. Charlie require 100. To keep up the streak and to make it six of the best for Charlie Large. Tops. Is he going to be the ton man? 
80. No. Yuri Rapport 20. Belongs solely to Robert Rickwood. Double five. You see this Game leg on the solely leg. in the leisure Yuri of Yuri Brewer. Brewer. Never we are, one a piece. The first leg that Charlie Larger dropped so far today, having won that game Third against Wickwood. Charlie to throw first. Four nil. Game on. Forty-five. Charlie Large is certainly not out of the equation here. He's Fifty-five. Really himself into this one. Two players at the bottom of the table, Large and coming really. Producing today. A look at the overhead angle, which gives us a real good indication of how the darts go into the board. One hundred and forty. Ninety-seven. Good switch and good cover there from Charlie Large. Something he was very good at yesterday. That switch down to the nineteens. Forty-six. Arguably, Brewer could have started on the nineteens on that occasion. Forty-five. 60. Gives the darts a bit of a talking to. We do have different approaches to negativity. Some of the players, as we've seen with David Evans, are in that mold where they like to shout out their own name. Adrian Lewis is someone who does this. If he misses a shot, you'll hear him go, AD. 60. Michael Charlie Smith. Require 120. Another one that likes to shout out his name and you know he's done really bad when you hear the full Michael Smith 100 that's something you're you've had to adapt a lot 140. Then, yeah, I'm just glad I don't have a really long name 100 yeah, Charlie required 20 there, calling that out if I had a long one 2-1 on Large. Charlie Large. You know, the average is it's Yuri to throw first. Very game good. On. It feels like a tense game up on that stage. Both players know what is happening in front of them. As Brewer finds a max to kick off leg four. Both know the significance of this particular match. Especially for Yuri, who can go into second place with a win. 134. He's climbed from fifth to second with the two points. 125. 140. 58. Brewer first to finish. 138 after nine. Large all the way back on 227. 93. Yuri required 138. 122. Charlie required 134. 58. Yuri requires a 60. A good leg here. Brewer, 12 darts thrown. That's double eight. Game shot on the fourth 13 play. data from Brewer. Yuri Brewer. And i got to say, both players really bringing their best to this game. We said yesterday, is this going to be a fixture in which we see leg, it's Charlie both to players throw see first. as an opportunity? Good standard from both. Number 91 there for Charlie Large and Brewer. 93. 88 and a half. The thing is, with those sort of stats and numbers... 140. You don't expect to see breaks of throw. Which, if that continues, Charlie Large will get the points and really compact this group up. 100. 
One hundred. This is the sort of move that Brew would need to make. One forty backed up with a ton. Ninety six. This is a bit like a fifteen hundred meter runner, knowing that it's coming up towards the lap, towards the bell, 95. and they begin to make their little bit of a move. Sixty. And there's the opportunity. If you can find a treble with this visit, it'll be advantage brewer. And I don't mean that one. Ninety. I mean that one. Charlie the required one hundred and fifty-two. Is that an escapologist act of recovery? Because large can't take out the one five two. So seventy-eight for the break. Yuri four three two. Seventy-one. And for the mid-match move, which could see him. Curve in a leg of second place. That was impressive from Yuri Brewer. Brewer. Full conviction within that finish. 14 darts. He's kicking when he needs to kick. Sixth leg. And now he has the darts to still a 4-2 success. And a great response as well. Because he's just hit a 13 darter. And then to back it up with a 14. 45. It's in his hands. All that weight of expectation just... Way a bit heavy. And it's response in every single sense of the word because in his opening game against Mount Cumming, it was a disappointed performance. I mean, six starts at double, average in the 70s, but he's recovered well here. 90.46 the average. Three out of six when it's come to the finishing. 57. It could have been so easy after that first game for things to have fallen apart for him, but... Credit has to go where credit is due. 76. Big dart. 93. Well found. It's just starting to slip away from him a little bit here. He stays, 41. In the hunt, stays in the race. Finally balanced. 59. Sixty. Charlie required one hundred and fifty-six. We have been treated to a couple of big finishes today so far. We'll have to wait for a few more. Fifty-six. So Brewer Yuri required one hundred and twenty-two. Should be his biggest so far of this group. Would have been the biggest of his week. Forty-two. Charlie required one hundred. In the context of qualification. It would have been huge. But here's that finish we've seen so many times so far. 80. Yuri but required it's not going to go. And so Yuri Brewer back for 80 for the match. It's going to be the solitary dart at tops. There's a little shuffle across. 40. But he doesn't find Charlie the double. Charlie required 20. Yes, Yuri. went above. You're symbolising between the Game finger and the, the thumb how far away he Charlie thought that Lodge. was. Charlie Large can do it with a point. That's where it is. It's in the double ten. That Seven break throw leg. from it's Yuri Charlie Brewer. Throw first. He wasn't Game able on. to use and capitalise to get the points. He's going to have to do it again. How good has Charlie Large been on double ten this week? It's been prolific. Nine C seven. I've been really impressed with him and his doubles in general. He had that bit of a wobble in the game with Robert Rickwood. Besides that. Been pretty solid on the 125. Outer well, this could well be the biggest leg of the group. In the context of if Charlie Large wins this, then you've got five players all tied on six 58. points after seven rounds of fixtures. Yui Brewer wins it, but well, he's in pole position for second place, which is the most ironic thing in the world, I know. 140. Mind you, that does sound a bit like Formula One at the minute, pole position for second place. 
96. Fifty eight, this is a good response again from Brew up nine darts and he's fifty six himself down to what would be a nice six dart conversion. The one seven eight. Oh, this is perfect. And one hundred and roll of the eyes, a raise of the eyebrows from Charlie Large as he turned around and looked at the board. Sees Brewer leave tops after just 12 100. darts. 100. Yuri requires 40. To put him onto eight points. And to put him too clear of that chasing pack Game, for that shots, race. And the match. For qualification Yuri place. And Yuri Brewer gets the better of Charlie Large in a last leg decider. How crucial a victory that could be. And he senses and he knows the significance of it. At the end of the second round of fixtures on day two, Yuri Brewer is in the top two spots. Welcome back. Before the break, a big result for Brewer, a 4-3 success against Charlie Large. And we'll take a look at the numbers from it, but the only one that matters really is the scoreline there. If Large had won that game, it would have been all bunched up with five players on six points in the table. But Yuri Brewer, he's taken a big step towards joining fellow Dutchman Moreno Blom at finals night on Saturday. Uh, we'll take a look at that league table and you can see what it's done for him. He's gone from fifth to second with that victory there. Four points adrift of David Evans at the top. He's now just one win away from qualifying but Danny Lauby, Mal Cumming and Robert Rickwood all just two points off the pace so it is going to be a thrilling finale in that fight seemingly for second spot in what is the first week of series four now series three well that finished in style on saturday night here at the moda super series luke littler played jacob taylor in a thrilling final a fantastic night was had a packed house and we are going to relive the experience now here is the final of series three thank you ladies and gentlemen you're all very welcome back to the live lounge here in portsmouth for the moda super series final we are coming to you live on Sporty Stuff TV. It's now time to bring the players to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing firstly from England, it's the new Luke Littler.
And ladies and gentlemen, his opponents all the way from Canada. It's the truth, Jacob Taylor. Well, here we go then. This is it. The big money match. The day that started with a coronation. We'll end with one here at the Super Series. Who will be crowned king? Will it be the boy who many believe was born to be king of darts, Luke Littler? Or will it be a Canadian coronation as Jacob Taylor, the 54-year-old, takes on a man, Phil, in the salad days of what is expected to be an incredible career it's been an incredible night an incredible week an exceptional series the best we've had so far I and mean, just what we've seen tonight in terms of the standard of play the entertainment Luke to and the, the crowd themselves may just suggest it's going to go from strength to strength yeah absolutely it's, it's just going to get bigger and bigger it's, get, it's becoming more and more international cards are aloft and they, they will be again let me <laughs> promise you that well, I was up on the up on the balcony oh, and I said to I said can you find out who won the ball and he, a couple of seconds later he come back Littler and I said well of course he did <laughs> <laughs> but yeah see, they have really put on a show and the fans have really really embraced it the, the noise in between the matches they are really having their own little party in you yeah, and look, it's only, what, 150-ish people yeah. in the building. That they're making it sound like a, a big arena event in the breaks, but giving players a complete best of order when they're throwing. They get it. 140. Yeah, plenty to applaud as well tonight. Much of it coming from Littler, but let's just 45. give some credit to Jacob Taylor because he has been the one that's actually got through with the most ease this evening. Yeah, he, um, he didn't have to rely on any other results this evening. Came through a, a very tough game against... 60. Owen Luke Bates Uruguay, 80. to make this final. But this young man has been irresistible. Well, they both played in finals before, mate, on a Saturday night. And... Jacob Taylor actually lost Second his Jacob finals 4-0 to, to Justin Demo. Hood. He got through as the, the best runner-up in terms of his performance for the entire week. In contrast, Luke Little won his final 4-0 against Richard North of an average of 109. Yeah, he, he doesn't have any negative memories of being in a final. You see, he's still in the infancy of his career. He's still in school, <laughs> Well, he's certainly dished out a few lessons on the dartboard tonight. One Taylor is tough to beat, and you give him a sniff, he punishes. We saw that in a couple of his matches already tonight. 58. Punisher. My nickname. Yeah, John Worsley saw it when he took out a 103 in that match. We saw Owen Bates miss opportunities. Taylor mop up in the semi final that went down to a decider. Well, he, he produced one of his his better performances in the semi-final against Jacob Owen Bates, 81. he averaged in excess of 96. 41. He's going along very nicely in this final so far in the early stages. 100. Every time I, Jacob I look at our, our fruit machine, which is where all of our data is which is on a monitor every time I look up there Luke Littler seems he to be on the second leg. consistently in excess of a hundred and there's no difference here well there'll be no four nil in this final third leg Luke Taylor two, three, three, squaring three. up first leg he's won in a final here now look Luke Littler has won many many titles in the WDF system he's won oh, two development oh, tours recently oh, uh, 
World oh. Masters Boys, a JDC World Championship. He's won loads of stuff, but this, in front of the TV cameras, 100. is this the week when everybody in the world of darts stands up and says, this man's a real deal? Oh, many of the things he's produced this week gets 100. clipped up and does all the socials and many, many moments tonight that he's produced has, has gone viral. And then many, there aren't going to be too many people in the darts world that don't know about him. But as I would say, it's the, the casual sports fans we want to get to know him. And, and he's aware of that. His, his understanding of brand awareness. He knows he's an entertainer. And how comfortable he looks on the stage. He owns the stage. Oh, Barry Hearn must... 140. As a, as a lifelong Bigger promoter, must look at this young man and think, wow. Yeah, darts is in safe hands. Avoids the ball this time. Wants double five 82. instead. Might have been better. Missing Bigger the treble there, Lou. 140. Didn't miss the treble. Well, Taylor hasn't missed that treble. Nor that one. Give him an inch. 140. Wow, a dart away from a break Bigger of throw and a 2-1 lead. A double two for two one to Littler instead. Awkward, wow. but he yeah. finds a way to let it roll in celebration. Taylor remaining unfazed. He's just getting on with his business, but Luke Littler there. Fourth leg, for Jacob all of the throwers. flamboyant finishes this evening, that double two could be the key one. Yeah, huge. Well, the fact that he was allowed to 41. go back at the five, Jacob Taylor. Well, that would have been typically Taylor this week, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. 100. Finding a way to win a leg. He looked like he was going to lose. Nobody has really blitzed their spells at the Super 41. Series like Luke Littler has. He won Group A on his qualifying week and then won finals night. And now he's looking like winning finals night from winning Group A on Champions Week. That is some level of darting dominance, particularly in a short format. Yeah, and on debut. 57. Well, I'm pretty sure he'll be back to defend the title should he lift the trophy. He'll be the first player to lift the trophy at the end of this one. We did have uh, winners before, but they were given giant checks. I think we had, they had some complaints that when they walked into uh, the local branch, they refused to cash them. 140. Luke Urquhart, 167. <laughs> yeah, nice to have some silverware. Yeah, and it's, it's something that will be retained here. They will have their pictures taken with it, and then it will go up to the engravers, and, well, he will forever have his name on the trophy, and <laughs> I've got 43. a feeling it's not going to be on there just Olivia the once. Wire 36. <laughs> well, this is a chance to break. It's okay. Eight. Still okay, really, because Taylor's not in finishing range. I mean, we will say it, but we want the players to to fulfill their dreams, and if their dreams are getting a tour card, which no doubt at some 85. stage... 85. Luke, you require Luke 28. M.O. We wish him all the best and don't want to see him back. Well, not for a long time, anyway. In the fourth round. Well, in the end, he gets there on that checkout. That's a kind of... dig one out there, Fifth didn't they, Luke? to the Rofers. Game on. It got a bit awkward, but... Well, all, all barring that 140 attempt, and that was only because he missed 18. darts at double to give Jacob the opportunity. He's been pretty much in control. Yeah, it could be he's over. Managing the, he's managing the occasion. 121. You just read out all those titles he's won. He, he knows how to win. He's used to winning. Yeah, some talent. Stand up, 100. take note. Remember the name. One hundred and forty. Remember Jacob Taylor's name as well, because if you're a, a fan of the CDC and I know lots of players in a and fans in America and Canada will be tuned in. He has done you proud. Well, it's been a worthwhile trip, hasn't it? Yeah. For Jacob Taylor, he has cashed. <laughs> Ninety-two. Ten thousand pounds in the pocket. He can upgrade his flight on the way home. But that. Way home might be getting a little bit 93. closer. Jacob, you require 140. Oh, being a little premature. Another one of those. Double 14 for the break back. 134. Well, it would be the ultimate irony and really fitting 
if Luke the Luke, Luke you require 80 to finish the final on the bullseye after his exploits earlier this evening. <laughs> Going to get better than that, too. A double Game. 14. Oh, and the match, the Super Series champion. champion. The leading Luke light. The, the Super Series. It's sweet success for the 16-year-old who becomes the third Modus Super Series champion. A family affair. Emotion for the young man. But Luke Littler, well, he's a deserving champion, isn't he, mate? The champion of the Modus Super Series. Series three is the new Luke Good afternoon, we've got that Friday feeling here at the Modus Super Series, live now on Sporty Stuff TV for the remaining nine matches in Group C. Before we came on air, over on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, six games have been played already. Matthew Edgar has been commentating on them and he's set up for a grandstand finish in this group. Matt, let's talk through the results so far. The first three matches really set the tone, the bottom three beating the top three in this group. And it's all just condensed and compacted in and David Evans didn't start his day off as well. We're looking in a position now where he's nearly got that qualification confirmed through to Saturday, which is his goal and his target. That's all he really wants to do. Make sure he gets through to Saturday after a disappointment last time. He started off disappointingly, but then really upped it in his second game with Robert Rickwood, getting a 4-2 victory in that one. And at the other end of the table, Mal Cumming, he's won both of his matches to put himself in contention. And Yuri Brewer winning against Charlie Large. Well, we'll take a look at the table. And um, Brewer now in second place in the group. He's the man in pole position to join David Evans. Yeah, um, Yuri Brewer making a move, a move that may be unexpectedly from what we saw in Group A. I don't know if many of us would have predicted he'd be in that qualification place, but he certainly rose his game and he's playing a good level of darts. Mal Cumming doing the same. Another name that we've got to keep an eye on today. He's been playing so much better this morning, winning those moments and not letting opportunities pass him by. From what you've seen in those first six matches that we showed on the YouTube channel, have you got a prediction for me? Which two players are going through? I mean, one's safe, isn't he? David Evans needs one more victory and then he'll be through to Saturday night. I'm going to go with Mal Cumming, which is different because when you asked me this morning, he wasn't the one of the two names that I mentioned. Yeah, well, interesting stuff. We'll see how it all plays out. It really is going to be a grandstand finish. And Mal is coming next. He's taking on Robert Rickwood. Matthew Edgar is going to head downstairs to join Henry Deacon in commentary. Thank you very much, Chris. Very good afternoon to everyone joining us live on Sporty Stuff TV for the continuation of the Moda Super Series. And you really have joined us at a fantastic time because we have a real, real fight for the line to see who is going to join Moreno Blom in tomorrow evening's final here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Battle of the Dooms with Mal Cumming up against Robert Rickwood, the 47-year-old from Melbourne. He's been with us throughout the course of the week as the Australian master Robert Rickwood. He came into this group 
on Thursday. The 51 year old from Burnley. I'm always known first as Tongue Man. Now to throw days. first. Game on. Charlie Corsafine is your referee. For the remainder of the week, one of the best officials in the world. And it is now coming to get us underway. 60. It's England against Australia. It's an Ashes battle here at the Super Series. And Matthew Edgar has joined me here in the comms booth. 100. Just in time to see how my predicted player gets on. He started the day on two points. He's made a bit of a charge. It's ironic for a 100. man the ball. It's interesting just hearing little insights to people's assessments to what's going on. And 41. The assessment for Mal coming that I overheard there was, he's hitting his doubles today. Something I've highlighted all the way through this week that he's not been taking those opportunities. 43. When you've got two darts at something or one dart in hand. And he's played himself into a position here where he's right in the mix now for qualification. 26. We do know David Evans is one win away. If he reaches 14 points, that will be safe for him. He'll be coming up in a couple of games' time against Charlie Large, the man currently bottom of the table. But if there's one thing I'd say about Charlie Large is I'd say he's a little bit dangerous. He's not been consistently brilliant, but he's 81. had moments of brilliance, well, you which makes him unpredictable. Streaky. That's a mal. Well, scoring hasn't been an issue all week, really. 54. It's been picking up on the opportunities that that scoring power gives you. It's been the combination finishers. They've just been non-existent. 45. Now you require the 104. The only ones he's really been getting are when he's coming with three darts in hand and quite often he needs a second visit. Not today. 56. It'd be interesting to know if he's changed up his practice routines at all or if he's just persisted with the routines. Maybe he's spent a bit of time 83. doing some sort of Mal, you require combination 48. check out games and routines and drills. Let's see how this small combination goes. It goes Game exactly the like they've been going leg. today. Mal coming. And that's going in. Coming. There's a leg to nil up. He's here alongside Second leg, it's Robert to Jeremy Fackle. We're going to see you here next on. week at the Super Series. The two Australians have come over together, courtesy of ADC Oceana. So it's not a bad practice partner to have. 60. And played at the Phoenix Club Tournament, which is a local tournament nearby the venue here in Portsmouth on Wednesday evening. Jeremy actually won that tournament, beating Simon Whitlock in the final. Reino Blom also played in that, as well as the likes of Adam Lipscomb and players of that ilk who have played here at the Super Series. It's got quite a prestigious, prestigious leader board, actually, that tournament. Luke Little has won it a couple of times. Chris Mason's on the leaderboard, and even Chris Murphy's got some ranking points in that event. 100. One hundred and twenty-one. Through two off the board. Easy one. He once made it to the semi-finals of the plate in a competition that we went to. The two victories was against myself. I think it was, and then Taylor, who is our social media guru here at the Super Series. 78. It's tops Robert, you're for Rick Quick 40. to level up at one apiece. Game shot on the he second He loves leg. it on tops. Robert Rick and then we are one apiece. 13 darts. A much improved from Rick Quick, who had some struggles to begin his day, Third but leg, has to responded first. to that Game particular on. setback quite well. We say struggles. It was mighty struggles. An average in the mid-60s. 10 missed darts at the double. It was nothing that we'd expect from Robert Rickwood, a man who averaged 86 on the first day. Just took him a, a game to get into his stride. He 100. played much better against David Evans. And he's keeping that pace going here. It's Mal coming. 100.
55. Ninety seven. One hundred. It's steady from Rick Wood, but he is playing against the dart, so he's going to need to find a few patches of brilliance. One hundred and forty. Well, oh, coming doing everything he needs to do just to hold out that arm. Place it on the forehead and 140. keep him swinging into the Marion air. Marion requires 72. Another combo finish. Game Another shot combo the finish. Line. No mistake Mal on the coming. double 18. They give Mal coming a 2 1 lead. Fourth leg. It's Robert to throw first. Smile on, on Robert Rickwood's face. He's been here since about 11 o'clock. It's the first time I've seen him smile. 25. To be fair, I've only seen Robert Rickwood smile a few times once he found a pound coin on the path. 100. What about the phone style of Robert Rickwood, Matt? 40. There's not really too much to report with it. It's quite... Generic. There's no real sort of movement of any of the 140. key points. It does have a bit of a loop. That will come down to the weight of the barrel. 180. There from that angle, Mal Cumming actually starts his throw quite deep in the action. A lot of people have sort of a, a set point at that sort of right angle. Where Mal Cumming starts 68. really deep into the action. Means a lot of the throw all comes on that push side. See there, that set point. You can't even see the flight, the flight tucked up behind the head. Nothing wrong with that. We're just analysing and talking you through the different actions. 180. Mal, you require 80. Rickwood hits his second 180 of the match. Perfect timing as well. Or is it? Game it's shot not. the fourth leg. It wasn't Mal too coming. little. A 180 is the best you can do. It was just too late. And that smile has turned into a bit of a laugh first. for Robert Rickwood. He Game probably on. can't believe what's happening. 100%. On the doubles here from Mal Cumming, and he is the man who is making the move. 45. In matter of fact, we haven't seen a missed double in this game altogether because Robert Rickwood's only had one opportunity, and he's taken it. As you mentioned, Mal Cumming could well be the player that is making the move because he won his two games prior 100. to this round of fixtures beginning, and it looks as if he could well be backing it up with a hat-trick, and if he does exactly that, it moves him on to eight points alongside Yuri Bua because of the leg... Differentials in his favour. He would actually go into that coveted second spot in the group. And then after this, we could see David Evans of Rubber Stamp his place into tomorrow night's finale by getting the better of Charlie Large in the next one. So if he does that, he's in. 100. And tonight, Group B will come towards a conclusion. Where Ryan Palmer is a player in the box seat to progress. And we won all four matches yesterday. The 60. line. Didn't even take the line share. He just won the lot. Who will be joining him? We'll find out the fascinating answer 60. to that at 10 o'clock. But full focus here on Group C is coming. Leads himself a 1 5 6 finish for the match. 83. Mal, you require 156. Rick Wood. Would need two trebles to have a dart the double, so it's big advantage for Mal coming here. 45. Robert, you require 137. On Combination finish hasn't been a problem for him, though. Can you get the 1 1 1? 
87. Mal, you require 111. Victory of the day. Be perhaps ironic if an Australian can win with the Nelson score. But he may well do exactly that. He can find Game, Chops. Shots, he lands and Chops. The and Mal lands Cumming. a hat trick of victories for the day. Mal Cumming gets the better of Robert Rickwood by four legs to one. It puts him into second spot in the group and puts him in a good position to progress. Mal Cumming beats Robert Rickwood by four legs to one. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. For all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Well, there is going to be plenty of chopping and changing in the race for second place in this group. And we've just seen some more of it with Malcolm in getting another victory. He's third of the day, 4-1 over Robert Rickwood, who only got one dart at double. In fact, there wasn't a dart missed at double in the entire match. The 111 checkout winning the match for the Australian, who looks like he could go from the bottom to really having a chance at making it through to finals night. And we could have another finals night place filled after this one, as David Evans needs just one more win to secure his Saturday spot. It is top against bottom as stretch meets large, and Charlie is effectively in the last chance saloon. So back to the boys in the box to see if Evans can book his ticket for Saturday's finale. Thank you very much, Chris. Will it be a case of good Evans here for the live lounge on Saturday night? Will it be a light with some... Preston Flighting stretch the former BDO World Championship quarter finalist back in 2020, taking on a man who made it to a, a lakeside final last year in the youth division. Charlie Large losing out in that final to first Bradley leg. Rose. It's David to throw first. Game on. And you can be a part of the action tomorrow night. And it's a good night out, isn't it, Matt? It is, and the atmosphere in here last week, pretty electric. 59. All we'll come down to see the 16-year-old sensation, Luke Littler. But you know all about the latest 42. ticketing news, don't you, Henry? The latest ticketing news, yes. And how do you get to a Saturday night final if you fancy a little trip down to Pompey? 96. The motorway? 
not just the motorway, by doing this, by scanning the Tungsten T-Rex. Can't be a part of that carnival atmosphere. And it was a carnival atmosphere last week. I couldn't even hear Chris Mason speak at one point. And he was stood next to me on the balcony. That was how loud and cavernous it was in here. Why don't you be a part of the darty party in Pompey? Well, we do know that Moreno Blom is going to be on show tomorrow night. We expect David Evans will be there. If he wins this game, he will be. We have one more place available in this group. And then three places will be confirmed tonight when Group B action concludes. 91. One hundred. This is last chance saloon for Charlie Large. I think the way the other are playing in this group, I think he might have already been drinking in there and booted out. I will come in. Made some really good darts today. Really. One hundred. David you require one hundred and twelve. Finishing that we've highlighted as being a weakness so far. It's actually becoming a strength. Here's a combination finish for stretch. 92. Charlie require 100. When a bin to stretch his authority on the group. Tots tops. Well, that was the option there from the top 60. for Charlie Large. David should require Could 20. Could find it, and so Evans back for double 10. Game shot on the double first ten. Day. David Evans. up a 1 0 lead. And now. He's free away. Second leg. It's three Charles legs away first. from his place in tomorrow evening's finale. And I know that he was crestfallen to have missed out last time. He was so close. He had a big run on the Friday after a poor first day in this Group C. Now he missed out. Did come back and Nine join six. us for the final on the Saturday evening. Was a part of the audience. But he wants to be on the stage playing in front of a crowd. Now, that in itself just tells me the confidence of David Evans. 134. What people would traditionally do here is they'd book their hotels and their accommodations up to the Saturday. And they 96. wouldn't commit to the extra night because if they didn't get through, it'd be deemed a waste of money. David Evans assumed he'd be in the finals night anyway. So he made sure that the accommodation was booked for that extra day. Really good sign of confidence. Um, I did the same thing when I played a few weeks ago. 44. I only booked the two nights. I didn't book the Saturday. As I know that many people don't. Mind you, that wasn't just because of whether you thought you were going through on Saturday or not, was it? Let's be 140. honest. 140. One hundred and thirty-three. Charlie required well. twenty-eight. Game shot on the second leg. Charlie, for Charlie, Charlie Large. Large to level up at one apiece. Third leg. It's David to throw first. Game on. One hundred and eighty. Let's just hit his ninth one hundred and eighty of this group. But it feels like quite a lot of them have been at the start of legs. One hundred and forty. It really does open up with them strong, and when you're doing that with the darts, quite often. Well, it's half the leg done already, isn't it? Well, if you hit a nine data, a third of the leg's done in your first visit. 96. Easy game, really, isn't it? Just a couple of 180s and take out a 141. Where's the drama? 100. Exactly. Easy sport. The darts players that make it hard. Charlie Large is making this hard for David Evans. Evans 95. just a win away from David to require 161. Ticket for 
Saturday night. Forty-seven. Charlie require one hundred and seventy. Another one of those. Would have left him a dart at the ball. Ninety-eight. David require one hundred and fourteen. By far, Charlie Large's best performance so far of the week. It's coming against the man who's been the best performer of the week. Forty-three. Charlie requires he seventy-two. It's seventy-two. 2 1 lead. Going to get two darts at double six. He Game only needs the, the one. Lay. Charlie Large. This is a very good performance here from Charlie Large. An average. Fourth leg, it's Charlie to seven and a half. Game on. He's in command of this one against David Evans. He's done the hard work. He's broke the throw. Can he now confirm that? 100. With a hold that would put him a leg away from a sizable upset. Won those two legs as well in the space of 27 darts. It's the 93. best consecutive run of legs we've seen from Charlie this week. Ninety-three. Ninety-six. Fifty-seven. Just about to say there, one of the things that's been really impressive with Charlie Large in this game is the tendency to find a treble with each visit. Just... Sixty. Keep the pressure on your opponent. And Evans weren't able to take advantage of the treble as visit there from Charlie Large, who starts on the 19s on this occasion, a switch that's worked 99. out very profitable for him. Continues with that one treble visit. Well, you're then just picking off different stages of the leg, aren't you, with every single treble? You're picking your way down. You're Charlie going through different zones. 152. What is David Evans just done? He has left the 159. He has just moved himself to a bogey by switching to the 18s. 99. There's nothing David Evans can do. He's put himself in this position, and this is where you normally go up and get a couple of treble 20s and think, ah, oh, only had to work this out better. 95. Charlie, Charlie Rapide, Large, 52. He's yet to miss a double in this game. He's going to have two darts at double 16, a double Game he's shot been the hitting fourth and enjoying Charlie all Large. week. The average stays around the 95. He is 3-1 up against David Evans, Fish leg, a leg David away from first. a sizable upset. Game on. But it's that situation again for David Evans where, although it seems like a big task, he's got to win the next three legs, he only needs one break of throw. He will throw first twice 137. in those three fixtures. But to win those legs, he's going to have to do it in five or less. The metric, as far as Charlie Large is concerned, you look at the legs that he's won. 13, 14 against the darts, 17 with the darts. He's going to have to do it within the path of the course, David Evans. 57. And when something like that happens, and your opponent then takes out the subsequent finish, first time of asking... 100. It can add a layer of doubt in your mind. It can stew. It can fester. You start to think, is he going to miss something? That that would be the thought pattern. 87. And you stand there thinking, well, as soon as he misses, I'm going to jump in. But again, that's sort of a, a negative. 140. There's nothing negative about this performance here from Charlie Large. He's having it large. Have a look at that snap on the throw. Charlie's one of those players. You could tell when they're playing well. 100. Just based on the way that they're throwing the darts. Just look at the snap here. When he's in full flow, everything about that action. 58. David just requires runs with 120. Should be a nice lie there to get the treble 20. It's tops. 
Game shot on the fifth one of play. the three David jobs Evans. done for David Evans. Two more to go. But this, in terms Six, of... Six, it's Charlie to throw first. Not Game throwing on. first. Makes it the hardest one of the three. One down, two to go. 96. But from Charlie Large's perspective, it'd be a case of, well, this is what I was waiting for anyway, the opportunity to throw for the match. And just to stop David Evans in his tracks a little 93. bit. 93. It would mean that the well, progression may not be as serene as a swan for the duck man. 140. There might be some kicking beneath the water. Well, he said it was his lucky duck. Right now, it'll feel like he's on the duck. Because this is, by far, the best performance of Charlie Large so far. His best average to date was an 84.60. However, that was 58. in his last fixture. So are we seeing a bit of growing, a bit of... Uh, ironic, isn't it? A bit of growing for Large. A bit of development, a bit of getting used to this. Well, we're going to start seeing his very, very best. 96. Wow, well, he we saw... 59. Charlie the requires previous match, 111. One with a one finish. Will this one be one with a Nelson? It could well be if he can find double Game 16. And the match. Aye, aye, aye. Charlie Large. Charlie Large has just stopped David Evans in his tracks for now to progress his way through to tomorrow night. As for Large, that moves him on to six points. It's getting very interesting indeed. And to David Evans, he's going to have to wait his turn if he's going to progress through to tomorrow night's final. Well, this group just keeps getting more and more interesting and that result bottom of the table Charlie Large beating top of the table David Evans who needed to win that match to secure his spot in Saturday's finals night has thrown things wide open Matthew Edgar said that Charlie Large had been thrown out of the last chance of them when he's found a, a back door and said I'll have a large one four out of four on the doubles 111 checkout in that match as well. Really good stuff from Charlie Large, who keeps himself in contention. As you can see in the table there, just two points separating second to six, Malcolming. 
and Robert Rickwood with the rest of them between them. Evans still needs just one more win, but that won't be easy based on the players he still has to play in this group. Right, coming next is a couple of those players in the middle of the table. Yuri Brewer, he can put himself in pole position again. He can move on to 10 if he wins this one. Still in with a chance of actually topping the group. But Danny Lauby can make it three players on eight points and set up what will be a real grandstand finish. Trap yourselves in, enjoy the ride, and it will be described by Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, this is going to be fast. This is going to be furious as Lauby takes on Brewer. And, well, yeah, as, as Chris rightly first said in the introduction to, to that game, game on. Yuri Brewer can kind of put that second position really within his grasp with... A couple of match days to go. Two points clear with two games left to play. It's a big, big gap. 26. One hundred and forty. You've got to give him plenty of credit for how he's grown and adapted into this week. And then we see on a regular basis players that open up a, a little bit weak and get stronger throughout the process. If you're Robert Rickwood, bottom of the table on six points, you'd 100. Kind of feel a little bit hard done by. But 100. nobody is fully out of this so far. He's still... And he wants to play for, and that loss for David Evans. 100. Could get drawn into a battle here. 81. He's going to have to be careful because he's coming up against Mal Cumming next. 69. Mal Cumming has been extremely improved today. It could be a very dangerous. 100. Danny required 12. Nice tightrope for David Evans. It's been some incline, incline days, Game but it's a bit of razzle-dazzle on double Danny six for so Danny Lauby to break the throw of Yui Brewer to open up a 1-0 lead. 14 data for the American to, first. to put on. himself in front. One hundred and forty. One hundred. Now he's probably 59. looked at how the results are going and thought, I can, I can still do this. I'm still well within a chance. This is essentially a bit of a, a game in hand because everyone else has already played this. If you can win this 4-1 or better, he will go into the qualifying position. I think that's what we're going to say quite a lot. There's going to be a lot of flip-flopping and turning over the next sort of four matches or so. I didn't say be flopping around like a fish. But I didn't want to get you going full on Dave Clark. What, like a fish on the stage? 100. And also, you look at it from Danny Dalby's perspective. He wins this game. He could move into second. And the two players he's got to play in his last two matches are the two players at the bottom 60. of the group. Danny in Charlie Large and Robert Wickwood. So, it could well be... Very profitable for Danny Lauby. One for five for him. 90. Yuri Set it up and hopes Brewer can't find the David Evans. 60. Danny required 55. It's tops. 45. Yuri require 81. And that opens up the door of opportunity for Yuri Brewer. 12s. The Bull. 56. Danny required 10. Game shot on the second leg. There it is. 2 Danny lead for Danny Lauby. And he's looked in control of this game thus far. Third leg. It's Yuri to throw first. He's only had game one on. dart of the bullseye in this game up to press. 59. 60. Now we're seeing this again from Danny Lauby in pressure situations. He just 
manages to conjure something up. AC5. Well, it literally is. Now or never, we'll be saying this about all the players. They're all in this sort of 57. position. Because of how tightly contested this group has been. No one's able to really run away. We do have David Evans at the top of the table, but 60. game by game, he's just starting to eat back to the pack a little bit. He ran off at a sprint yesterday. 180! Sort of walking towards the finishing line at the moment. It's like a horse at the Grand 97. National lead in the race heading up to Beecher's Brook, but you know it's still a heck of a long way to go. Forty. Sixty. Now he's had a max in this leg, but not really much either side. Hasn't really been royally punished for it. One hundred. You require one hundred and forty. And so this sixty-four is for a three-nil lead, but it's going to be. 100. Put under pressure. Now, we saw him bust the 140 64. yesterday. So you just had to hold your collective breath for a second. But that Aim triple eight leads tops. Danny Lowby. And in next to no time at all, Danny Lowby's into a 3 0 lead. He's only taken him in five and a half minutes to do exactly that. Four That's how quick fire and quick first. pace has been. Game on. And Brewer could be off the stage in no time at all. Seems to be something about this afternoon that's just made everyone's finishing go through the roof. 140. Rickwood was 100%. Charlie Large was 100%. Mal Cumming was 100%. David Evans, 2 for 3. 140. Easy one. Danny Lowby. Polishing off these combination problems with no problems. One word that springs to my mind. Urgency. 140. The need to do it now because there will not be another opportunity to pass after it. 100. A really good dart there to squeeze that one between the smallest of goalposts. 100. A 140 here. And Lowby is all but there. 60. Able to squeeze Yuri it through this time. 121. So, advantage Yuri Brewer. A chance to get one of those breaks of throw that he's going to need. It's a dart at the ball. Game shot. That's all he needs. Play. Yuri Brewer. Yuri Brewer. It's his second tumplus checkout of this group. With a 1 2 1 finish on the ball. Fifth leg, it's Yuri a to vital throw first. 1 2 Game 1 on. finish on the ball. A 12 dart leg for Yuri Brewer. Just to let Dan Lauby know it's not going to be a canter. 100. One hundred and forty. Group A as well. That is Yuri Brewer's biggest checkout of the week as well. The one two one. He's done a one sixteen twice. 30. A one oh six. And he's also done your favourite finish. The one hundred. He has the power. One hundred. You could also call that the Duke Dumont. Need you one hundred. One hundred and eight. Fired up to the max. One hundred. And look what Lowby's left. Well, the last two matches have been won on ton toppers. Both of them won elevens. Danny requires. Is this one going to be one on a one-two-one? Could still be if he could find the trouble 17. And now the ball's on to get the job done. Yuri, you require 133. That's revenge. That's a shot that Yuri Brewer took out. Oh, and he's going to offer an opportunity 93. for Dan Lowby. Danny, you require 25. 25 for the match. Double four. Big dart. Outtake of breath. Shot. And the double and is the fired. And Danny, Danny Lowby fires his way into second place in the league table. One of three players who finds his way onto eight points. But because the legs difference, he finds himself in that position. Lowby beats Brewer by four legs to one.
Welcome back, all poised for a thrilling finale here in Group C on a day that has just seen so much Super Series shuffling. Danny Lauby making his move before the break with that 4-1 win over Yuri Brewer, 92.92 average for the American. Brewer getting his highest check out of the week with that 1-2-1, but it would prove to be the only leg he won in that match. And the impact on the league table is that Lauby joins Brewer and coming on eight points, but actually goes ahead of the pair on leg difference and is in a decent position but it just keeps changing game after game now attention turns back to david evans at the top of the table still needing that one win to secure his spot still got that four point buffer still might make it through if he doesn't get that win in his last couple of matches but he would be much happier and much more relieved if he did get it here he takes on no malcoming who is unbeaten today can he beat the man who was unbeaten yesterday let's find out back to the boys in the box Thank you very much, Chris. Who's going to be dancing with delight in this darting duel? Now coming up against David Evans, 47-year-old from Melbourne, former World Championship participant. The man who's played in the World Championship in both codes, David Evans. Interesting theme here, though, today, Matt. This is the third time that David will have the darts in a match. The previous first leg, two, it's David to throw first. He's lost. Game on. 4 2. He's up against a man here who's in the best form of the week in Malcolm in his last two games, a 93 and a 91 average. But the most significant thing for me, especially because those last couple of games, is those double ins. What did I say the last time David Evans played? How many times does David Evans open a match? One or open a leg with 180. He's here. 10 in total now. When you open with a, with a max in an important game like this, just two things. Settles you in. Also lets your opponent know 100. that you're here for the battle. Well, coming. Someone who's come here for the battle today. Four from four in the last match. Mightily impressive for a guy that we said the combination finishes have been the problem. No problem. Could be the winning combination. 60. David, you require 127. favourite finish. Go on, David. Go for it. 95. He was way too pragmatic to... Even contemplate the bullseye there. Even 32 after 12. Really good opening this on stretch. 134. Stretch. David, you require 32. Game good opening the leg. 15 leg. data David to get on the board for David Evans. With victory in this one. Second we'll leg, it's Mouse to, to throw first. Game on. 14 points. That would be enough. 100. If he loses this, the lies begin to run out. Mal, one of these players that shortens their actual name. He's full name. 97. Malcolm coming. Something you don't tend to see too often, people. Like, you don't see David Evans become Dave Evans or... 125. You, you don't get many Matthews using Matt. One hundred and forty. Suppose you can have Jonathan's being called John. One hundred. Would you go with Hen? Feels like I'm being caught that anyway. Only H. One hundred. We? we don't even give you the E in the end. We just give you the one letter. Yeah, because I've got nicknames with different jobs and different sports. So I, I get David confused when I cover one thing to the next what my actual name is. There's usually another word, but we can't say that on air. Ninety-six. Mel, you're requiring ninety-one. We question the combination shots. He's put them right today. This would be a big one for him. Needs to find a treble. 
to get a dart at the double. It's double 16. 59. That run of David requires 68. It had to come at some point. Maybe at this point. Could have been the wrong point. So it's double four. Or a break a throw. 60. Two now you require right on 32. The wire. No reward. Big dart. 24. Big miss, David potentially. Eight. This is for the break. This is a 2-0. Double two. How awkward is that? Does he have to pick a side? Game shot Finds the second it. And with it, David asserts Evans. his authority in this match. And if, well, Mal loses this game, Malcolm could be in Third the leg middle. Is David to throw first. Game on. You mentioned about players playing in both codes. These are both players that have played in both codes of the World Championship. David Evans in 2020. 60. In the BDO World Championships at the O2. Got to the quarterfinals, losing five sets to three to Mario van der Bogart. 140. He then played in the PDC World Championships in 2021. That's the year we didn't have any crowd. And they had that big sort of ramp way going 96. down the middle. He... Lost 3-0 on that occasion to Ross Smith. Mal coming. Also played in both codes. 2019 played in the BDO World Championship at Lakeside. Going down 3-0 to Justin Thompson. And then just this past 57. year. 57. The 2023 PDC World Championship at the Alexandra Palace. Mal coming. Went down 3-0 to a man who was banging for at that period of time. Alan Souter. Ninety-five. Sixty. Just to remind you, a win for David Evans will confirm his place in Saturday night. Doesn't matter how he does it. As long as he puts those points on the board. Now you require 146. 146. So this 146 isn't going to go for Mal Cumming. So Evans is going to be back for... 84. David, you require 94. lead and... To I'll well, really take a cast iron grip on this game. It's going to be two darts at tops. Game only shot the, the one. third leg. Finds David himself Evans. one away from the victory pose. A leg away from being here Saturday night. Fourth leg, it's Mal to throw first. Game on. The Preston man to join the darty party in Pompey. 100. That'd be our breaking bit of Tuxton news. 43. 100. 100. Be a defeat for Mal Cumming, who has and so well to put himself into a position winning his first three games. 100. So field defeat here would put him in big, big bother. 82. The way the fixtures are going, though, he could get a hand from other people. The two players on eight points with him, Dan Lauby and Yuri Brewer, will take on Charlie Large and Robert Rick. 100. We could have a situation where we have, going into the last lap of fixtures, all five players on eight points. 96. Now you require 101. Could have countback possibly being in play. Is it going to be a case of 101 for what would be Game the, shot the perfect play. 15? We don't often see that. Tun, 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 tun. 101. Darting 101 for Mal Cumming. Fifth leg. It's David to throw first. Game on. The five-ton leg. You'd think it happens more often. 
Play just coming down, hitting the tons, and then taking out the 101. And it's extremely Easy rare. Four. It's the first time it's happened this week to give you a guide when you think that how many matches we've played already. Well, it's not going to happen in this leg. 66. But by and large, it doesn't happen because in the modern game, players are so inclined to switch. So you don't get it as a, as a, as a virtue of that. 60. Certainly on that 1-2-1 one, one with one dart in hand now, you'll see a lot of players go for the bullseye now to give themselves the two dart possibility. 100. Ninety eight. Well, come in. There's a guy that doesn't know when he's beat. He's never beaten until that winning dart goes in. He is fighting hard in this one. Trying to turn around a three nil deficit against a man who's forty four. One leg away. I'm getting himself into Saturday night's final, something he wasn't able to do last time, and I know he was mightily disappointed. 137. 55. Now you require 58. Can't make a severe dent. 58 for coming for 3-2. It's going to be two at tops. Game shot on the fifth leg. Malcolm. Cruise that breaker throw brings the game back on throw at three two. Sick though gets Mal to throw first. Game and on. Three leg that passes him by. David Evans will be ticking them off as opportunities as lives. He's got two lives left. And this one doesn't look like a strong one with Mal coming opening up with a one forty. Is he going to do it again? 140. How many times has David Evans opened up legs of a max? Didn't quite do it on this occasion. 140. This is fantastic from Mal coming. 3-0 um, down. Rallied hard. He's fighting. 49. And right now you'd have to say he's a strong favourite to take this one to a deciding leg. Especially if he keeps filling up that red. 100. If he can carry on hitting the red, he may see himself into the black. 140. Now you require 121. To send us the distance from all the way behind. Now he likes to attack finishes, even when his opponent's not on one. 57. So he would have gone for the ball if he hit that triple 17. He's in 764 after 12. To take us to a decider right the way from the brink. 60. Now you require 64. 64. Oh, he's not going to get a dart. He needed the 16. 32. David Evans. Another David likely require opportunity 112. to get the job done. He's hit a ton plus checkout in two of his three matches so far today. Is he going to finish this one with a 112? It's going to be a dart at tops. 72. And that was her tomorrow night. Now you require 32. Game show on the sixth Said it was an unlikely chance Malcolm. that David Evans had to wrap that one up. It's an unlikely situation that we're going to go to a deciding leg. David Evans was 3 0 up. So then, final leg. Game. It's David to throw Malcolm first. In, has game dug on. deep and really produced. Last couple of legs 15, 16 darts, averaging around about the 94. Do you believe in momentum? 84. If you do, that suggests that Malcolm in could get the job done. 140. Just have a look at the score and power pack here. Look at that ton plus graphic there. 15. 137. Effectively, every single visit, 
kicking off a different part of the leg. He's tunning his opponent three. potentially here into submission. The bull is bullying. But this is timing to perfection. To leave. Well, what you would associate with his close teammate, Robert Rickwood. 121. David, you require 100. A ton for tomorrow night. Tops, tops. Was what he tried. 60. But couldn't succeed in doing. Mal, you require and so from 3 0 down, can Mal come in, complete the comeback in some style? 157 is not going to go. And so, David Evans, this is your chance 97. now to progress your way through. David, you require 40. Game he was 3 0 up in that game. And, the match, and Mal Cumming came Evans. racing back at him. A great performance there from Mal Cumming, but was just not able to get over the line. David Evans gets over the line. And the big line, he is through to Saturday night. But who will be joining him? We'll find out soon. Coming up next, Robert Rickwood, Yuri Brewer. Welcome back to this fascinating Friday at the Moda Super Series where David Evans has finally secured a spot in the Series 4 Week 1 Finals night. It was a long time coming, but that victory over Mal coming sees him through. And Mal, well, he came coming back, didn't he? 3-0 behind, forced the last leg decider, but a maximum in it helped Evans over the line. He now can't be caught at the top of the table, but look at the rest of the field. The next two fixtures could see a couple of players ruled out of the race but could also see all five remaining players end up on level points with just one game to play. First to play his last life is Robert Rickwood. No wins today but one here keeps him in contention. However, Yuri Brewer would go back into second and lay down the gauntlet to the chasing pack if he can succeed. Right, I think I better hand you back to Henry and Matt for this one. Thank you very much. Chris, so it's like one of those tongue twisters, isn't it? Will Robert Whitwood win for the first time today? He's got a smile on his face for the second time today. If he loses this one, there won't be much to smile about. He'll be on his way back to Burnley. His local football club been in a fantastic season in the championship. We're looking forward to seeing how they get on in first the Premier leg, League. Roberts to throw first. Game on. League table down here. 
suggests that Rickwood needs to win and needs to win big. The boy from the Claret Town is feeling a little bit blue at the minute. 64. In the blue town. Very blue town, I may add. 100. Put it this way. The Burnley Slinger will not want to be in that kind of company at the bottom of the table. 140. Surprised you didn't manage to find a way of putting tungsten into that one. 140. I don't know, you just did it for me. I suppose you can call Portsmouth the tungsten town these days. 100. Well, there's plenty of darts every single week, isn't there? There's 104 matches. An opportunity 66. for everybody to come and watch those on the Saturday nights. How do we do that, Matt? We scan the tungsten T-Rex, and you could be a part of the carnival atmosphere that this place really is providing now. The atmosphere on Saturday night was absolutely ridiculous. I'm guessing you scan that for all the latest ticketed news. 84. Yep, Robert, you can come and meet the dark stars and the team of the telly. 68 for Rickwood for the opening leg. Double four. Twos. Game shot on the Found. first leg. Robert Rickwood. You would have a little bit of a laugh with Charlie Quarterfield, our match official. Second leg, it's Yuri to throw first. Just loves game this on. game, can't he? Yeah, he probably has to borrow a quid off him or something. First time I met back up with Robert Rickwood this 125. week. Come up and ask me if I was going to join him for a beverage, you know. And then I said, what are you paying? 140. Very swiftly reminded me to bring the wallet. So I take it you're definitely not going then. <laughs> 100. One hundred. Mind you, on that four pound five kebab meal deal, aren't you? I wish I could get one Easy for four pound five. five. Remember, Robert went out for dinner in the old venue in Southampton, and he ordered the food, and it was meant to be six pounds, and they five. tried charging him eight, and he was kicking off. He's like, "Why is it eight? They said, "Well, it's an extra pound because you're not having a soft drink." And it's 39. an extra pound. Get this one. I've never heard this before. Because he had batter on his fish. <laughs> 60. I take it he's a sponsor. I can't spend. 52. Well, I think the response, I, I can't 60. repeat what he said, Robert, to be honest. 116. He wasn't happy. He gets through to Saturday night, though. He might be able to afford a bit of 41. batter on his fish later on. You're requiring 92. Extra pounds in the pocket. Oh, hello. Double, double. 74. And it was nearly toil and trouble. Robert, you require 75. From Yui Brewer. To double his lead. It's going to be double 12. And now the Sixers. Game shot to double that lead way. to make it 2-0 and Rickwood. to accrue the break of throw. And it would still put Robert Rickwood in the picture if he can win this game. Third leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. I think that was the same day that he was having a walk along and he fell over and he slid across the venue like a penguin on his belly. Plenty of people are having a good laugh at that one. 60. One hundred and forty. Good darts from Rickwood. He'd have that bounce out that cost him a couple of extra points, possibly another treble 20. He's reacting really well. Really good response to what was a poor start to the day. 
It's a 66 100. average. That's not what you associate with Robert Rickwood. It's somewhere between that and this, because this is Robert Rickwood's A game. Six time. He needed Robert, it the most. Robert, you require 141. The range today has been... Well, it's been like a complete and utter scatter graph, hasn't it? 43. That's probably a case in point about Robert Rickwood. He's set himself up so well to get to the finish. Then once he's got there, he's hit a 43. And it just opens up the door a little Robert, bit you for Yuri He could have piled in the max. Oh, hello. 58. Yuri you require 149. 149 for Brewer. His best finish so far is a 1 2 1. He's not going to expand on that on this occasion. We said Rickwood needed to win. Robert, big. you require 40. He's on course. Thirty. He was. Yuri you require on 84. Course. He'd just be deviating. It's a bullseye. 59. Oh, that's a good effort there. Robert, from you require 10. Shaves the wire. Game shot on the third leg. But Rickwood, Robert Rickwood sells into a 3 0 lead. Into next to no time at all. Fourth leg, it's Yuri to throw first. Game on. Just to paint you the picture of the scenario, if 92. Rickwood was to win this game, he'd move on to eight points in the group. Level with Brewer, Cumming, and Lowby. And then Charlie Large to have the opportunity next up against Danny Lowby to one. put five players on eight points going into the final round of fixtures. If Danny Lowby beats Charlie Large, well, the ball's very much in his own court. 134. As far as qualification is concerned, because he would basically just have to beat Robert Whitwood in his last round of fixtures. And 100. it'd be enough. Because he'd be on 10 going into the last round. Then you'd have a couple of players on 8. One hundred and Vice versa. It could all come down to that last game of the session between Lowby and Rickwood. Good firm dart there for Rickwood. And he's following it in. One hundred and What a time to get the first 180 of this match. 154. 134. Oh, fantastic response. Robert, you require 140. 134, 121, 134, his last three visits to the board. Sort of just rejects the advances of the 180 hit by Robert Rickwood. 40. Yuri, you require 20. I've done that for you, Henry. <laughs> May not get a go. Game not get a go. Fourth it's 13 darts for Yuri, Yuri Brewer. Another impressive leg. Back to 3 1, and so Rickwood has the throw. Fifth leg, it's Roberts to throw get first. The job done. Game on. And to keep his hopes alive, and he'd kind of feel maybe put. 83. Possibly he'd have it in his own hands still, potentially going into that last game, because he's got to play now being game 15, depending on what happens elsewhere. 47. It could be a case of if he wins, he's in. We'll park the table talk for now. We'll resume that as we head into the 41. final few games of the session. Four more after this, beginning with Large and Lowby. 46. And Brewer up against Evans, coming up against Large. And Lowby up against Rickwood. 140. Welcome back, Robert Rickwood. Just a... 60. A weak couple of exchanges there. And that might be the last mistake that Yuri Brewer is allowed to make in this one. Just one treble here for Robert Rickwood. 59. Even that... will seem to be enough... The damage is done.
43. Yeah, we can find a couple of trebles, which he won't now. He could have just made things just 41. a tad bit interesting, but it's going to be 6 on 135 for Rick Wood to get the win. And 25 first. 97. Well, he poked in the double 19 as part of trying to go for a double-double combo, so we know he likes this double. 180. Robert, you require 38. I think Hubie enjoyed that, but you may not enjoy this. 98. Okay. No score. Well, you require have you ever 67? seen the like? 67 for Buat. For 3 2, the 180 may not be in vain. 51. Robert, you require 38. Back we go again. Here we go again. Game but this time, shots. Madhouse comes up transferable for Rickwood. Rickwood. As he seals a 4-1 success against Yuri Bua. And so, it could set fair the crescendo of crescendos. If Charlie Large beats Danny Lalby next, you're going to have five players on eight points. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Well, today continues to twist and turn, and Robert Rickwood has just thrown another spanner in the works. A 4-1 success for him against Yuri Brewer. Hadn't won before that match today, Robert Rickwood, but he's kept himself in contention, clinging on to his faint hopes. You can see in the Group C table that all those players are bunched up on eight points, and that could become five if Charlie Large wins this next match against Danny Lowby. David Evans, he's already through. He can relax and has a game to spare. But for the rest of them, it's a real fight to the finish. As I mentioned, if Large wins this, we do have that situation of five players on level points with a match to play. But if Lowby wins, then he really is in pole position 
and he can basically eliminate Brewer, Large and potentially Rickwood as well depending on the margin of victory. So a big, big match. We might know a lot more after it or we might not know any more at all. Back to Henry and Matthew Edgar to see what they know. All I know is it's head-hurting stuff here at the Super Series as Large takes on Laubeek. The conclusion of round four or five that we're going to see in this ever so compelling group first C. First leg, it's Charlie to throw first. Now, Game on. what we're learning is as the games go on, Charlie Large is getting better. Absolutely. Average of 84 in game number two, and he really rose that in the last one to a 95. Most impressively, 100% on the finishers as well. 120. Oh, that was in. Was it in? It was in. It will not count. If this was 96, darts, it would have. But in the steel tip game. Darts have to be retrieved to count. And he would have been on the nine darts. He's on the Phantom Nine. He's on the Phantom Nine. Perfect visit here. And he notches a double with a 10. 83. He's got a Phantom Nine, which Michael Smith once got at the World Championships. 140. What a start from Lauby. 120, 180, 140. And a treble 20 on the floor. He's left 61 after nine, and one of his darts didn't count. Danny requires 61. Look at Charlie Large. He's down as well. Just going to be one dart of the double, despite this amazing yeah, power scoring. Leg. And that's Stand all he Lowby. needs, a 12 dart leg there from Danny Lowby to break the throw of Charlie Large. Second leg, it's Danny to throw Throws first. Game on. Where Charlie Large, you've got to say, welcome to an international stage. 93. The disappointment there is he only hit one trouble with that visit, Danny Lowby. Yeah, he's cooling off, isn't he? 60. But what Charlie's got to do in this scenario is just try as much as possible to stick with him and hope one that there's going to be a deceleration. And if that's the case, then you can perhaps try and punish, but this is ridiculous. I'm going to put the averages on screen. I know it's early. But have a look at that. 57. 98. Goes down to a measly 124 and a half. 180. The third 180 of this match already. These are two players right up for this. Forty one. The job a bit too large here for Charlie. Can't take out the two oh four. Fifty seven. Danny require eighty nine. A ten will lead in the blink of an eye. Fifty seven. He was looking for the Charlie bullseye. Laid up quite nicely though for the thirty two. Maybe he just likes a, a challenge and just thought I'd Squeeze it in the very small section of the 18. 58. Danny, you require 32. So double his lead. 16. No score. And for all those things we've Charlie been saying, he's done so 89. well. Could end up in a level game. 1 dart at the pull. 57. See, Danny the same, setting 32. it up, using the 18. These are a long way off. Game shot on the second leg. Recovery there Danny Lowby. Danny Lowby. It's when you were starting to think that the distress signals might be sent up and the flares. Third leg, it's Charlie to throw first. Game on. He's halfway to a very important victory. This is essentially a game 57. in hand for him. Because Malcolm in, Robert Rickwood and Yuri Brewer, who are already on eight points alongside Danny Lowby, have already played their ninth fixture. This is Lowby's ninth fixture. Before we threw a dart today, you tapped your screen and you said to me, Matt, I think Danny Lowby versus Robert Rickwood in game 15 
is going to be mentally important to decide the qualification. You may be right. Well, it may not even be that, because if Danny Larby wins this game 4 0, he's on plus 7 on legs difference. 94. You're effectively from that point eliminating every other player apart from Mal Cumming, who's on plus 1. 60. Because Rickwood can only get to 0 on the legs difference. Lauby, even if he lost 4 0 in his last game, would only get, would worst case, get to plus 3. And so then, if he can 56. do that, well, he's forcing Mal Cumming to win by a margin. 137. 137. It's going to be double 12 after 12 for that 3 0 lead. 58. Danny required 24. More in the space Aim of around about five line. minutes. It's a 13 dart of a Danny Lauby. He obtains the double break. And what a performance this is in a pivotal encounter for him. Fourth leg, it's Danny to throw first. He's averaging Game 98, on. three from nine on the doubles. He's had legs of 13 and 12 in there. And the only reason the average is 99.86 is because the middle leg was a little bit scruffy at times. It was a finish, wasn't it? It just 58. took a couple of handfuls of darts to pop the double. He ended up getting it with the last one in hand 81. as well on that second visit. And this is fantastic from Dan Lowby. Just when he needs it. He'll put himself favourite to join 40. David Evans. And Marino Blom. Saturday night's lineup. 56. Is Lauby looking to join the Saturday nightclub here at the Super 42. Series? This win effectively puts him on the hill. 100. One hundred and eighty. Danny required one hundred and eighty for Charlie Large, but it's not effective to the leg in terms of Dan lauby has got six darts at the one three six. One hundred and twelve. Goes back to what we said earlier. That too little, too late. It, it's not too little. It's the biggest you can do, but it certainly could be too late. I know Danny Lauby likes double twelve, but you don't have to set it up by hitting double sixteen. 139. To round Danny off an incredible 24. performance. Game Double shot. 12 and the match. for Danny Lauby. Puts him in pole position to progress through to tomorrow night's final. A victory in the space of seven minutes for Danny Lauby. It was fast. It was furious. It was fantastic. It's Browby Evans up next.
Well, this group has been waiting for somebody to just grab that second place, and Danny Lauby might have just done it. A 4 0 win, a really timely performance for the American in that previous match there, and he deserved it, didn't he? 96.97 put in his display of the day right at the right time, eliminating Charlie Large. And if we take a look, at the Group C table. He's taken another couple of players out with him as well. Yuri Brewer and Robert Rickwood now out of contention. And Mal Cumming himself is going to need a, a big leg swing in the last couple of matches. Of course, it's in Lauby's hands. If he wins his last game, he will be joining David Evans going through to finals night on Saturday. Right, the next match is featuring two players who already know their destiny for this week. David Evans through Yuri Brewer out of contention. So we're just going to turn back the clock and have a look down darting memory lane. A few significant things that happened on this very darting day. And going back to 1996, a couple of players who play here at the Super Series regularly, Martin Adams and Matt Clark, played in the final of the Finnish Open. Adams winning on that occasion. We also saw, saw the return recently of Benito van der Pass from a hiatus from darts. He won his first PDC development tour title on this day in 2013. An interesting one as well in the middle there, the women's series resumes tomorrow. Bo Greaves, when she was aged just 15, winning both the Welsh Open girls and women's titles. Andreas Harrison here just a couple of weeks ago, winning the Nordic Cup singles and pairs, and a couple of players that we have seen here at the Super Series winning Challenge Tour titles back in 2019 on the very same day. But on this starting day, well, it's been about David Evans qualifying for finals night, where he joins Moreno Blom. We're still seeing who will get second place in this group, but this one has nothing on it, really. So a bit of a free roll, a last outing for Yuri Brewer, and a chance for Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon just to breathe and relax a little bit. Breathe? What's breathing? Prodigy song, weren't it? Was it? You surely know who Prodigy are. I know, I know who the Prodigy are. You don't know Breathe? No. Get out. Can I take the coat with me? Well, they say it's a bit of a free world game for Yui Boer, but it's going to be a bit more than that because you want to do enough in this game and leave a Lasting impression that first we'll leg, it's Yuri to throw an invite first. back into the Game competition on. next time around. And when you consider the clamour for places in this particular competition, every player will want to be giving it their damnedest in every single match to make 60. sure that they will come back and return for what? What will be Series 5 in August? Have you ever wondered... The level of intelligence of, of dart players. I think we've just had the case in point, haven't we, in the last few minutes. When, when we look at the, the league table situation, which you've all seen on your screens a second ago, David Evans, not too long ago, popped his head in the commentary box and goes, have I qualified? Wasn't even sure. Despite the fact there's a, a laptop and a screen in the other room, so he'd have been able to have seen this. And I know Dave's going to watch this back a bit later on, so hello, Dave. Wasn't his finest hour. I think it was an excuse to come and say hello, to be 134. honest. 134. Well, I was just thinking, he'll probably have to stick to dart shows, because he's probably not going to end up on something like Mastermind. 85. Glenn Durant are... Commentary colleague was on Eggheads, weren't he, recently? He needs to tell us that story. 96. You're you requiring 93. Well, for him to tell you that one, you'll have to stop telling you the one about the time you won the Premier League. 29. Going to be in the company of Glenn Durant next week. Very much looking forward to that. 59. You're you requiring 64. Meanwhile, in the present, Yuri Brewer wants Game double eight. On the first Five lane. double eight. Yuri Brewer and takes a one nil lead against David Evans. Second leg, it's David to throw first. Game on. As I say, you want to do enough in this to put something in the mind of the selectors to say, well, we want you back for the next series. 45. As I say, space is a. 
Oh, they're getting bottlenecked, aren't they, series by series? 55. The point where, as a protest now, we're able to look into the future and future series now in terms of finding players and finding talents of the Super Series. Well, from the younger players 96. I speak to and players who are sort of on a development journey, a lot of them are this up as being sort of like a big milestone for them now. This is becoming a big part of a player's sort of journey to the top. One hundred and twenty one. The very top of international stage. Playing in front of the TV cameras. Sixty. A big prize money. And you get your games commentated on by me and Matt Edgar. I suppose everything's got to have its downside, hasn't it? Well, there's always the mute button. That'll probably end up being your nickname one day. Henry Mute Deacon. 58. David required 142. Couldn't hear you. Sorry, did you say something? <laughs> 62. No, Evan's leaving 80. After. And you could tell this has kind of been the game. But the sting's kind of been taken out of it. Forty, David, you require Because of 80. the scenario, because of the situation. Double ten. To level. Seventy. Yuri require forty-eight. Game shot on the second lay. Yuri Brewer. Well, the man who struggled in Group A is 2 0 up against the man who's dominated Group C. Third leg gets Yuri to throw first. Yuri. Game on. He's halfway to victory. David goes to play with his duck for a little bit. He might put in his glass of water. 81. A little bit of a swim. He's yep. just turned him round a little bit. There it is on full display. 44. And in fairness, you can be that up close and personal with the players in the crowd tomorrow night because you can see those little seats in the background ain't too One far away. And you can see some excellent darts a little bit like that. But having a look at that, that's the QR code, the Tungsten T-Rex, which sends you over to dartshop.tv to be a part of the Darty Party of Pompey. Tickets 60. just a couple of quid. There it is. There's David the Duck. I wonder what book it's reading. We might find out from David, maybe. 60. But head over to there. A couple of quid. Free drinks for tenner as well. Oh, but Ridwood might be happy with that. Not three drinks for a tenner. Then again, it probably won't be his tenner. <laughs> 92. I'll probably ask what that comes with. Three drinks 41. For ten. So, yesterday, I asked Chris Murphy a question. I'm going to ask you the question now as well. So, the tickets are 58. available. 58. You require 139. What can you get in 2023 for £2? Murphy said two trolleys. 99. You can have a ticket to one of my karaoke gigs for £2. I need more than £2 for that. <laughs> You've had first-hand experience. You absolutely enjoyed it. 98. Yeah, you're you're required for long 40. When started, that's for sure. 40. No score. David, you require 149. Look at efforts there from Yuri Brewer. No reward. He will come back. And David says, rubbish. 99. Yuri, you require 40. It's hard 40. to play once the... Adrenaline, everything's gone because we could say, well, he can play to win the group. He's already done that as well. Game shot on the third lay. Yuri Brewer. The group is sewn up. David Evans is your champion. Fourth leg, it's David to throw first. Right Game on. He's facing down a potential 4-0. 
for you. He blew up. It would put him on to 10 points, but because of the significant like, difference for Lauby, it wouldn't be enough. 60. But 10 points would be a good mark for him in this group. we we'll give him something in terms of a send-off that he can be pleased with and something he can work on. And the good thing about this is it's 25 games in front of the cameras, in front of the lights. There's so much you can pick on. You can look at, you can pick out and you say, I, that was good. 96. I like that. But also at the other time, work out what he can improve on. And you've got a big range of video evidence to look at and think, how can I improve 60. for the next tournament? What is, do you think, the parameters for Yui Bua after he leaves us after this game? What should be the, the goals? What should he play and how should he improve? Swainsea I think he's got to play as much darts as possible. I don't think it's a case of saying, right, really just focus on this one system or do this. I think he's at a stage of his career at the moment where he just needs games. Just play as many games as you can. I know in the UK it's quite easy because quite a few of ours are played in like holiday parks and things like that. So it's great because you can play a different tournament and different format every single day. 140. And that's what I'd suggest. Go to tournaments where... There's two or three events on that weekend, and one hundred and five game time as possible. Game time here might be about over, but that's because of his own good play here. One hundred and thirty-six after twelve, and he might have to 96. take it out because of that setup from Evans. And so double eighteen, and now double nine. Game for Yuri Brewer to finish his campaign Yuri on a high. Brewer. He beats the Group C winner, David Evans, by four legs to nil. And have a look at that. Nice little release of emotion there for Yuri Brewer, who's learned a lot from this week. As for David Evans, well, we're going to see him tomorrow night at the finals. Next up, it's all about qualification. It's all about Mal Cumming and Charlie Large. I'm joined by the man of the moment, the group winner, David Evans. Congratulations, through to finals night. Going to get this bit out of the way. 4-0 defeat in the last match. You were 
Well, you went for a duck in that one, shall we say? Certainly did. <laughs> Yuri Brewer getting the win there, but the league table does paint a rather prettier picture for you. And you must be proud, did, the, did all the damage yesterday, really? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, getting, getting the five wins yesterday stamp, standed me in good stead today. Um, it got a bit nervy towards the end, and I think that's that showed in the last game there. You know, um, even knowing that I was already through, but it's, it's one of those, you still want to win the games, and it is very frustrating. Some but, days can be plain sailing, other days you're paddling away under the surface. But there was yeah. one match in there and one moment in there, last leg decider against Malcolm. He'd just come back at you from 3 0 behind yeah. and you hit a 180 in there. That must have been the big moment for you. Absolutely. I mean, well, any, any time you're three apiece and you hit a 180 or a, you know, a massive three treble score, it's going to stand you in good stead. Um, and for me to pull that out at that time, it, it shows that I'm capable of doing that and capable of carrying on doing that. Um, and I think that was the pivotal moment, and, and that's what's got me through to tomorrow. And I know you've been determined to get there through to finals. Now, how are you feeling tomorrow about your chances and about playing in front of a crowd here? Absolutely, love playing in front of a crowd, especially you know it's uh, never got the chance at Ali Pali because there was no crowd there, but um, it would have been amazing. But playing county level things like that, you always have somebody there, you always have a crowd there, um, and obviously the BDO World Championships as well, that was there. Um, and they had a crowd there as well. Not much of one, but, you know, there was a sort of a crowd there. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I am. Right, well, well done. He'll be here tomorrow. You could be as well. Henry and Matthew will give you all the details during this next match. Now, it's a big one. Mal coming in action. He needs to win 4-2 or better to have any chance of qualifying ahead of Danny Lauby's last game. So I'll hand you back to commentary. And I'll just say to David Evans ahead of tomorrow, good luck, Duck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Murph. Yeah, we see what you did there. Well, great to hear from David Evans. We're going to see him tomorrow night, but who's going to join him? Because it's either going to be an American or an Australian that is going to join him in that field. Well, for Mal Cumming, he's got to win, and he's got to win big if he's going to progress his way through. Now, this is a scenario then in terms of the table. Mal Cumming is on eight points plus one in terms of legs difference. Now, he's got to win big because effectively the worst that Danny Lauby can do because he's on 10 points plus seven is finished on 10 points plus three and so effectively he's got to win 4-1 or 4-0 to stand a chance to if first. Danny Lauby wins two Game legs on. against Robert Rickwood in those circumstances that Mal Cumming wins big then he's going to be the American that goes through so to a certain extent Mal Cumming is left a little bit behind the eight ball but if he can come out swinging and get a big win here then it leaves it for Danny Lauby to go and win, basically, to go and do for himself. Danny Lauby will almost feel like he's got two opportunities here because he's got Charlie Lars going into bat for him, who, got to be said, has been playing some good darts this afternoon. 84, 95 and 87 averages in his last three matches. If he can stay around that sort of pace, he might just do enough here. Give the thumbs up for Dan Lauby. 57. Give him the old Gildings. And that despite how horrible Danny Lauby was to him in 60. the last game, averaging 96, 97, and that 4 0 success, which was done in the space of seven minutes. 43. Sixty. One hundred and forty. One hundred and thirty nine. Does feel like a bit of a stretch here for Mal coming, but you'd rather have some hope than no hope. Now you require 118. 4 2 is the worst he could get here in terms of a result that would give him any hope. And to do that, you'd have to rely on a 4 0 victory there from Rickwood. No He's score. He's got that wrong. He's got it wrong. Charlie required 109. The 54 would have left him 64. The Treble 14, we left him 22. 
77. He's got it wrong now by 10. Now you require 10. 180. He was throwing a 128. And he has to now go back to the start. And so Large is going to come back and try and punish that Charlie mistake to the hilt. 32. And when the room to manoeuvre is so slim Game from out coming, that could Charlie well Large. be a fatal mistake. Large leads 1-0. And now, basically, effectively, Cumming has to win every leg from Second here. Second leg, Charlie to throw first. 4-2 would mean that Wickwood has to win 4-0 against Lowby, as we explained a couple of seconds ago. But you're just leaving it too precarious for that to happen. Although, 46. of course, it did happen in Group A, where Lee Cox beat Wesley Harms by that scoreline. And that's it, Moreno Blom through. I know he's been up on the balcony watching some of the 55. action today. He just can't get enough of it. If you're Mal Cumming or a fan or a supporter, a family member, a friend. 100. You've got to say, that could be the most horrible, gut-wrenching, heartbreaking way to miss out. If he misses out now by one leg, you're going to look back at that moment. That's not just a red pen moment. That is a red marker moment. 41. One hundred. Possibly a red card moment. Fifty-nine. Certainly not a red carpet moment. That, at the moment, looks like it's going to be going the way of Danny Lowby. Still 100. plenty of work to be done. But the task is getting harder and harder all the time for Mal coming. What about the yellow card to here at the Super now you Series? I like the idea of the winner of the Super Series winning a yellow jacket. A bit like the Tour de France or the Masters Golf. It's coming. Goes to double 16. And this time that was the right Charlie play. require 156. Wow, this has put him right on the brink. 59. Now you require 16. No score. Charlie, you require 97. The only hit a double so far in this match was the wrong double. This would be painful. 57. Now you require 60. I think he's got it wrong as well. This is a counting error here from both players on stage. 12. The 19 would Charlie have left him 48. 40. He could not have left a finish by staying on the treble 19. Game shot on the second leg. Charlie he set it up, I suppose, and he's done his job. He's 2-0 up. Now coming now needs to win every Third leg single leg to throw first. and hope that Robert Game Rickwood on. wins every single leg. He needs eight consecutive legs to go his way, whilst Danny Lowby is through. 100. The odds of that is as much as winning the lottery. But someone wins a lottery every now and then. Someone wins it more every week. I suppose it depends how you specify lotteries, whether it's the national lottery, postcode lottery, the local neighbourhood street lottery, the post locker lottery, lottery, lottery. Sixty. Nine C five. Just looking at the mannerism of Mal, I'm just wondering whether he thinks he's done already. I get that impression as well. Nine C nine. Getting those vibes. Nine C eight. But look what happened with Moreno Blom. 33 76. to 76. Now you require 68. Tonight, Ryan Palmer. 10 to 1 outsider. It's top. 43. Charlie require 170. Big surprises do happen. Could he send Lauby through on the fish? 
Not this 100. time. Mal, you required 25. Has to go, Mal. Has to go. Double eight. Game to bring it back the to 2-1. And Mark why is coming. there is still hope there's a chance? And why is there is a chance? There is still that flicker. There's still that glimmer. Fourth leg, it's Charlie to throw first. There's still a mathematical possibility. Ninety-three. One hundred and twenty-one. One hundred. Sixty. I hope that chance and that flicker of a light that you're talking about just 56 like a dimmer switch just turning down bit by bit 60 going out like a candle in a tornado 96 Eighty-three. Oh, Charlie required one hundred and fifty-six. Another mistake from Al coming. That could be the one. Charlie's got six starts here. Working out the numbers. Ninety-four. One hundred and sixty. Perfect setup. Leaves himself tops, and this could be it for Mal coming. This could be it for the group. We might be about to send Daniel Alby through to Saturday night. Charlie required forty. Tots for large. Double ten. Fives. Game and it's Charlie curtains are coming. Way. Charlie Large. And it's going to be Danny Lalby that joins David Evans through to tomorrow night's final. Fifth leg, it's Mal to throw first. So we now know Game half on. of our lineup. Half of the lineup is complete. Moreno Blom will be here tomorrow night. As 83. Will Danny Lalby. And David Evans, you could join them. Get out your phones, scan the QR code on 93. the screen. You could come down to Portsmouth. It's a two-pound fee. 140. You could be on those tables just behind there, seeing who's going to be crowned the first winner of this new series, series number four, week one. 134. More than that. You can book your tickets for pretty much every single week here at the Super Series. So if there's a particular week 100. where you think, do you know what? I fancy a weekend away. Pop down a Pompey, watch a bit of darts. And you can do exactly that. You can plan a weekend around the Super Series. Any weekend. We're here 50 weeks of the year. Come join us for the most intimate darting experience 60. you can get. Seventy one. Mal, you require one hundred and eighteen. This was the shot that started in Rabbling from Charlie Malcolm required one hundred and forty five. Okay, I'm thinking it was the one two eight. Ninety five. Mal, you require sixty. This one a much easier one to work out, just twenty in tops. Forty. Charlie, you require fifty. Do you think you might go for the ball here? Conventional. Thirty-four. But not victorious yet. Now you require twenty. And he throws no the score. last one away, Charlie almost in disgust. 16. He can't qualify. 
He's had his opportunities, he's had his Game chances, shots. but those and chances are over. Charlie Large. Charlie Large and Mal come in, end their campaigns. Been impressed with Charlie Large. He's really grown into this one. And he departs us. I'm sure we'll see him again soon. We've got one more game to come up. That's Daniel Alby and Robert Rickwood. Welcome back then, just one match to go here at the Super Series in Group C. That after Charlie Large ended Mal Cummings' hopes of qualifying in the penultimate match of the session. A 4-1 win for the 18-year-old who has shown flashes of what he can do this week and I'm sure will be back at the Super Series. Mal Cummings needed to win that match to have any chance of going through, but second spot has now been sealed by Danny Lauby ahead of his final fling in this group. He faces Robert Rickwood, who could still finish on the same amount of points as him, but can't make it through to finals night. So to guide you through the last match of the group, it's Henry and Matt. And so welcome to the final furlong in Group C, and it is going to be a game where for Danny Lambie, it's preparation for tomorrow night. And for Robert Rickwood, it's just one final game for him in his Series 4 stint here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. 51 year old from Burnley. And the challenge tour winner is the Wok. First leg, it's Danny to throw first. Game on. What will the Wok cook up in this one? Well, Lauby was ultra impressive in his 100. previous game against Charlie Large. 4-0 win, done in the space of seven minutes. 96-97 the average. Two maximums in there, four from 10 on the doubles. That's for Rickwood. 81-99, four from 13 on the 75. outer ring. Been an up and down day for the Burnley boy. 65. And he finished on a high. And he's through. I'm sure Danny's going to be bringing a big 60. contingent down with him. So I'd book those tickets fairly quickly if you're down for tomorrow night. And as we mentioned in the previous 60. game, tickets for pretty much every single week is available. And that is via dartshop.tv. That is the place to go to to get all your tickets 92. for the Modus Super Series. We've got all 12 weeks available. And Pins Week will be on sale as well, pretty soon. And through all the way down 80. to the end of July and heading into early August in this 
particular phase. Don't forget to give us a follow on all of our social platforms. It's there at MSS Darts. Uh, 60. All the latest ticketing news. One hundred. One hundred and forty. Danny required ninety six. Sixty. Robert, you require seventy four. Well, last game for Lowby really was the best of Lowby. You've said that he normally does it at the right times. He'd save his best for when he needed it. 54. Danny required 36. Average. True demolition job. 4. Robert, you required 20. Oh, just sense that the intensity, the, the urgency has been on the first sucked leg. out to the pair Robert of these Rickwood. right now. Second leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. It's a game where both players know their fate. I suppose for Robert Rickwood, he's got an opportunity by winning this to move fourth in the table. One of the things you don't want to do is finish bottom. And at the moment, 140. Robert Rickwood is resigning. 140. Group B action will be coming a bit later on this evening, around 10 o'clock. The conclusion of that group. Three more places available. Saturday night's final. We've got Wesley Harms, 60. Rob Collins, the Lord of the Board, Keelan Kay, Lee Cox, and the man top of the table overnight, Ryan Palmer. 60. Eighty one. Robert, you require one hundred and twenty one. Ninety six. Really good effort there from Robert Rickwood. Just grazes the wire. He sees the funny side. Sixty. Robert, you require twenty five. Twenty one. Danny you require one hundred and sixty. To light up the blue touch paper in this game. Tops. A little bit of a nod of appeal from Robert Rickwood and that Robert that wasn't too far four. away, was it? He had a little look around to check if it was in. As soon as he saw it was, he expected that one to be in. Game shot on the second. But that was a very tight Robert angle Rickwood. there that he's managed to find from the Tightest man in darts. I'm going to say something now. Third leg now is coming. To throw if he first. could have won another leg, he may have been sitting tentatively at 2 0 to Robert Wickwood. Is Mal Cummings going to miss out by a leg? Effectively, oh, what am I talking about? Yeah, the other way round, yeah. yeah. It is still lost. 55. 96. Henry picks himself back up off the floor. We'll continue to watch some Dan Lowby, Robert Rickwood. You know when your brain's looking at something and it it's thinking wrong. And, yeah. Eighty one. Apologies about that one. One hundred and four. Sixty. Forty. Some tired bodies around here. Ninety-one. 
100. Lauv is probably already thinking ahead to tomorrow. 108. Go and enjoy a bit of the Pompey Seafront. Did do that yesterday. Went down the local seafront. 100. Maybe Danny go and Ricardo find the local Fontier. music venue around here. There's a couple of good ones in this city. Tops. The fine tune himself Game for Sean tomorrow the night. Lay. Danny Lowry. Two, one. Fourth leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. Viewers um, across the pond will be tuning in in great number. It'll be around about early afternoon time out in the States 83. when Lowry takes to the hockey tomorrow night. Be some prime time darts and prime time. It's going to be in the country box. Really looking forward to the conclusion of this week. I don't think we've got a clear-cut favourite. I don't think we've had anybody that's really stood out. 41. Say, that's the man to beat. Ninety-four. Seen some great North American players here. In the gate series. Oh, Jacob Taylor, of course, lose out in the finals. Luke Littler, who is tuning in this afternoon. Hello, Luke. 100. He yeah, had three different winners from three different continents. Such as the international variety of the Super Series. Could this be the biggest conversion in six starts? The 350. Paul Nicholson's a big, big fan of this conversion. Very rarely happens. 100. Danny, you require 170. And you will go for it. 60. But he had to hit the treble first. 100. There's a couple of trebles. 137. Oh, Danny Ricoy, set up 110. there from Robert Rickwood. It's tops. 50. For Rickwood. Robert, you require 40. He pushed himself one leg away from ensuring he doesn't finish at the foot of the table. Game shot on the fourth lay. Robert he Rickwood. loves tops, Robert Wickwood. He leads 3-1 against Danny Lowby. Fifth leg, it's Danny so Lowby has first. to break the throw game here on. to keep this game going. 58. Reminder, we are back from 10 o'clock this evening on the Motor Super Series 100. YouTube channel and on Sporty Stuff TV for the conclusion of Group B. In the minute, 96. Ryan the Lion is purring. Purring through perfection. May well be 95. just a couple of points away. We're getting the job done. Come and join us for the action to see how are you concluding the finals night field for week one? Easy two. One hundred. Tonelli is among one oh seven. AC, Danny require 107. To bring the arrears back to 3 2. Game a double 18, a double he Danny loves so Lally. much. And so he has the deficit and forces Rickwood here to Six serve it out. To throw first. Game on. To get the job done, to get the game won, and to finish his campaign on a high. It means three players on 10 points, but because of the Superior legs difference that Danny Lowby has. Easy three. Still seeing through. We're going to see an American, a Dutchman, and an Englishman 58. tomorrow night. 
May well see another Dutchman in Wesley Hans potentially in the field. One hundred and forty. Right, Palmer in the way from Wolf Collins in second. Harms third on four points. Lee Cox on two. And Keenan Kay. Well, he's going to need a big night tonight if he's going to progress his way through to the finals tomorrow evening. He went without a win on his opening night. An absolute minimum is going to have to be. One hundred. He's probably going to have to win the lot and then hope something happens amongst the pack. One hundred and thirty-three. So, we would looking to set up and hope that Lauby misses the fish. 94. Danny, you require so 170. For Lauby, is it going to be a case of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? No, he's not 60. going to catch the big fish Robert, alive. You require 84. But it could be a case of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the points that Whitwood will get from this group. Double 12. Game shot. Shows the points of Robert Rickwood, who's going to end Rickwood. his campaign at the Super Series with a victory against Danny Lauby, who we're going to see back here tomorrow night in the finals here on the live lounge in Portsmouth. An embrace between the pair at the end, but here's Rickwood who picks up the points that's going to at least see him have something to smile about at the end of his campaign. Those the averages in on screen, 87 and 86 respectively. So Rickwood the winner against Lauby, but it is going to be the American and David Evans into tomorrow night's final, Matthew Edgar's made his way up to the balcony to join Chris Murphy. Thanks, Henry. Yes, twists and turns all throughout this group. Perhaps the biggest surprise was that it didn't go down to the last match in the end. Yeah, it came down to the second to last game, 14 of that phase of darts today. And realistically, when we look back at that, everyone was in with a big opportunity today. And down to the last couple of fixtures, everyone was still in with a chance. And then just one by one, we sort of ticked them off. I think in the end there, Robert Rickwood, great performance from him. It's nice to see him not finish bottom of the table because I don't think he's performed as someone who should be at the bottom of the table. So it's at least nice that he's not going to be looking back at that as a really sort of bad campaign. Well, here is the final Group C table. Charlie Large, a man who does end up at the bottom, but look, him, Mal Cumming, Yuri Brewer, who was out of it with a, a couple of games left to go, they've all shown what they can do, and you can actually see just two points separating the five players there. Well, you've got that second position, the qualifying position. We've got three players on the same amount of points. It's a literally just on legs. I say all the way through these things that really vital that you get those wins big early on if you can and if you are going to lose you've got to keep them quite tight because legs quite often in this group come apart but I've never seen it like that before normally we have that rule of three they lost five games and still managed to qualify yeah well we do have three players through now to finals night we can take a look at how the week is panning out the winner of this group David Evans we'll touch on him in a moment Danny Lauby getting second spot Moreno Blom won group A but tonight we're going to focus on group B and of course I'm going to ask you to pick which other three will fill the places well I'm going to probably go with Ryan Palmer well that's a safe one isn't it he won all four of his matches last night but we did see David Evans here win all five matches yesterday, that's when he did the damage because today was a bit of a fight, wasn't it, for Stretch? Oh, absolutely. If he would have lost another game yesterday, for example, and only won four of those matches, when he wasn't performing early on, that would become a problem. And instead of just having that two-point buffer like he had at that point, people would be tapping him right on the shoulder, and that causes its own dramas. You've still got two more names to give us. Go on, give us one now. Give Henry the other one tonight. I think Wesley Harms is performing enough He's not playing the Pete Wesley Harms, but I think he's playing well enough to get through this group. Right, there we go. Edgar will complete his predictions this evening when we return 10pm live on Sporty Stuff TV and around the world on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. But David Evans and Danny Lauby have made it three through to finals night, and the final three will be found out this evening. Do join us.
Here we go then. It is final time and we can't wait. Seven legs potentially. And Matt Clark will have the darts because he won the bullseye in the practice room. Is Matt going to go back to Lancashire with £20,000? Or is Raymond Smith going to be on a flight in a few hours' time from Heathrow Airport going back to Australia with a lot of Aussie dollars? In fact, I've just had a little bit of a communication from Chris Murphy, our commentary colleague, because he seems to think that Superman could be paid in crypto. <laughs> nice joke there from Murph, but I think he wants the cash. You could have sent me that one, Murph. I've run out of jokes now. No joke is final no jokes over these two players, but uh, it's Matt Clark who continues to impress. He's won the bull. But as Paul alluded to on the balcony there, I thought he made a very vital point. If anyone can handle the pace of Matt Clark, then it's the mental strength of Raymond Smith. And that's something that resonate, resonated maybe when you said that, Paul, because I think the last game there with Scott Walters, he was beaten when all of a sudden Matt really slowed down in getting his darts out. And okay, he was affected first leg is Matt to throw first. Lesson learned. Game on. Final game. Who will win? £20,000. My life changed in Hull, the World Masters, when I won twenty five grand. The winner of this league is the five grand. The winner tonight gets twenty grand. The biggest prize in amateur sport. Over one point one seven million in prize money. The Motor Super Series will be paying out every year. And it all boils down to series two, these two players. Who can emulate what the fantastic corner whitehead did him? Just watching that player back early just brought a little bit of goosebumps and how much it meant for Conan. And it'll certainly mean an awful lot for one of these guys. One thing I've noticed about this audience tonight is just how attentively they've paid attention to all of the matches tonight. There's been no wins, chanting, no singing, no boisterousness like the week before Christmas when Adam Warner won. But we've got two players here who are not local to Portsmouth and maybe everybody's on the fence. All they want to see no, is won. somebody creating a bit of history for themselves. Yeah, proper daft fans are, and I, I think it's because one of the locals hasn't brought 20 or 30 people with them. I think the most was Scott Walters, who brought seven or eight. So it's just been a crowd over here to enjoy the darts, and uh, we've be enjoying a match like that from Matt. Sneaky good on the maximums this week has been Matt Clark, whereas Raymond has been so close and yet so far to being the man at times this week. He did have a chance no, to win Group A against Justin Smith. He didn't win that match and had to play in Group B. And then he faltered on day two. He has not won a group all week, but neither has Matt Clark. He was second in Group C. And if you put those two things together, Fifth, it means eight. that these two are playing each other for the very first time in the Motor Super Series, and it's for £10,000. I always got the fame for Raymond Smith. He's got the mantras, I never dreamed of success, I work for it. He's just a big Fifth, thinker who's worked eight. hard on his game, worked Mate, on the record, psychology of the game. I've heard him chatting with players this week in the, in the players' area. He has a lot to say, he has a lot of thoughts about the game, whether you like it or not. I think one person I want to listen to is this guy. We talked about Alexander Merckx being in a zone. Game shown the first Matt Clark leg. just continues Matt to do what Matt Clark does. And every time I've doubted him this week, and I will shake his hand and apologise if he wins this, because so like Raymond's maybe the first. focus, Paul, has been a, a little bit about the pace and how it has an effect on others. He's played some really good darts at times as well. Even myself on the balcony, I was 100. picking up Raymond Smith because I had him as a firm favourite. But sometimes when we let someone go under the radar, they're okay with that. And I think Matt Clark has been okay with that his whole career. Because at no, no time in his darting life has he been on anybody's radar in bold. Even when he made the England squad, the attention was about Painter, beaten, Fordham, King. 
when he was in world championships. One it was always hundred. about other people like Richie Burnett and Martin Adams. He made the quarterfinals of the world championship on his debut season and didn't do any better in the next world championships or anything after that. Hey, T4. It's been a very interesting story, which for me has got a few dots after it because it's very far from finished. Ray Smith. He goes home as the runner-up. Does he go home happy? No. Not at all. Hey, T5. He's someone who gets on the Thank podium you. Best of order, in please. F1 and isn't happy unless it's at the top. He's an all-or-nothing kind of guy. He will take things on the chin. He will take the second spot if that's all he can muster. Doesn't mean he's got to be happy about it. Ten grand to the runner-up, twenty grand to the winner, but also just the respect of being the Motor Super Series Series Two champion. An amateur darts right now. One hundred. And we start again on Monday. I've seen the names. I don't know if they've been announced yet. The names for for next week, but some excellent players there. So all starts again Monday morning, nine thirty. Sporty Stuff TV. On the YouTube channel of Modus. If you do want to know the names, because I don't want to be the person to give them out, I'd like 43. you to go to our Ready Twitter to page at MSS Darts. Check it out. It will be released within the next 12 hours. Raymond Smith is going for a 116, and he's got at least two of these this week. He's been mastering these shots, but he's not going to get a shot at double 18 this time. 60. Three well thrown darts. Matt, you require 143. But on a positive, it leaves a two dart combination. 143. Exhale equals confidence. Treble 20, treble 17, double 16 is the route he's attempting. Part one. Tick. Part two. No tick. That leaves 66. Correct. So we're getting close to about 30 seconds of Raymond Smith. To 87. Think about this Raymond, 56. you require 56. He's okay with it. I was looking at him the whole time when Matt was going for that 143. He didn't show any signs of impatience. Double top. Big Got dart. A, absolutely. Game show. And he's the, the big man leg. for Raymond the occasion. Smith. One all. We're down to best of five to see who takes the title. So look, it's Matt to throw first. Game on. Raymond Smith must break Superman in this match. It's kind of a big ask when you think about it. He has to be the general zord of this game. He's got to be the bad guy to take out the good guy. If indeed you are a reader of comic books and other paraphernalia in fantasy universes 57 he's got something about him raymond smith that could work in a comic a big bald head there steely eyes or maybe if matt clark takes his 100. glasses off he'll actually look like superman i think we just need a bit of order there because one thing about a fantastic crowd we have been in here a few hours now it's the one voice syndrome, Paul. I used to hate it. I could have, didn't mind 20 or, 20 or 30 or 40 feet, 50 people shouting at the same time. Or even in some of the bigger crowds, it's just like a big swarm of bees behind you. But when you can hear one, two, it's an absolute nightmare. I'm not getting anything from either player as to 140. state discomfort or impatience. I'm loving the bubble that they're both in. Mac Clark slow, Mac Clark this, Mac Clark that. Mac Clark currently 103.5 average. 100. That's all that matters. Matt, you require 136. That high all week in a completed match. In fact, the only person not to have averaged over 100 all week from our finalists was Jim McEwen. Because we saw Adam Mould. The ton plus average earlier on tonight. The biggest average of the night was shared 
by Raymond and Adam because they have both had 101.9. Got to get another. He's got to get One another in a hundred. sense that 76 is not right, a gimme. 76. 76 is a finish that Dar players like. And very simply, I'd say to people, 20 is a must, treble 20 is a bonus. So look at the 16s. Just like this double top. He'll once again take his time and do things his own way. Raymond Smith is just behind. Game the, the third last leg. thing that Raymond Smith Mark wants to Clark. hear is game. And that's exactly what he did here. So it's back to the drawing board for Smith. Focus well, on Raymond's winning the leg of darts. And start off with a minimum one treble visit. Every time he blocks it by hitting that small 20, for me, he may be better off 60. going to the 19s, but it's easy for me to say that from the commentary box, but I just get the feeling that there is another level for Raymond to find if he can use the board a little bit more in the way of flexibility. 19s, 18s. Four, he uses the four. 17s a lot. But that's predominantly with one dart left when that 60 bed is covered. Because that's as you can mark. see, those darts are very, very upright. And that was a much more inviting guide to get a 140. 140. Case in point. I always think sometimes when you're in a situation like this where tension, anxiety in your body has to be taken into consideration that when you're aiming for targets, you have the tendency of going low. It's just your body just telling you something. And in this situation, I've seen myself whether it's on a TV stage, just going big, just going just above that treble, and you're thinking, wow, that's gone in like that. I didn't expect it to go there. What a lovely angle that is to show you how his darts behave in the final third of the arc. 140. When they're going through the air, slowing down as they go to the board, that flight dragging it through the air. And 161 after 9 is a very nice situation when your opponent is a good 237 behind. It's going all the way this, Paul, isn't it? 134. So. And the best Raymond finals always do. A bit like seven days ago in week 12 of qualifying when John Henderson took out a ton plus finish against Niall Cullen, But a 161. He's going to be aggressive, obviously. And when he gets his shots, it doesn't matter where his opponent is. He's going to go for them. Very Martin Adams. Interesting with the, at least the 140 here. 100. I don't think much on this 25. We'll keep it simple. All about that big number. Don't ever underestimate hitting that big number. Game shown the four play. Makes that second Raymond dart. Smith. It's now a best of five, Paul. What we have we is a Matt situation first. which goes Game back on. 50. 60 years in this sport. If you're watching on Sporty Stuff TV, you might have been watching darts for the best part of half a century. 100 Loving shots like that. But if you cast your mind back to the 1970s and the 1960s, you might remember a tournament called the News of the World. And every single game in that tournament was first to two legs. 43. And that's exactly what we've got. First to two legs from here for £10,000. And when we talk about pressure, this is pressure, yes it is, but because they've played all week long, 100. they are ready for this pressure. They will never be more ready. It's just a question of who is more ready than the other. And right now, it's Matt Clark taking the full ascendancy in this game. Raymond Smith just showing that sign of distress which we didn't expect. 125. The last two darts will feel like gold dust once again. It just gives him an outside chance. But for Matt Clark, one treble visit here. And he has a huge advantage. Now, Matt Clark, it's in your hands. It's yours to lose now. One He looks impervious on his own throw. Old school darts from Matt Clark. He's basically telling himself... You can do what you want on your throw, but you're not having mine. Nine darts thrown and 81 60. left. Now, if he takes it out 81. in 11 
or 12 darts here. He's telling Raymond Smith, you're not having my throw unless you hit a nine darter. Double 12 to be within one leg of the crown. Game That's an 11 darter at this time of the Matt tournament. Clark. That's world class wherever you are watching from. Incredible from Superman. And Smith now needs a brace so of legs. Otherwise, first. it's not meant to be Able. for the guru. And as Paul alludes to there, I couldn't have put it any better. With his dart right now, Matt Clark looks unbeatable. And what you're doing, that it's a bit like a penalty shootout in football. You're making the other team, you're going 1-0 up, 2-1 up. You're making 45. your opponent make mistakes. You're making your opponent score 45. Matt Clark's on a free roll, he will feel, on this leg. It's not the end of the world if I lose it because I have the dart in the final decider. You hear 45 and you think, come on, exactly the same. Give me a couple of trebles. 42. He doesn't take advantage. He lost the first game of the night. Four legs to three. He might win. The last game of the entire thing. 103 games have been completed so far this week. Incredible when you think about 54. it. 54. We started in late October. It's early February. This is the culmination of that time frame. These guys won't be thinking about that because right now they are so much in the zone. It's all about 100. just playing in this little concentrated Portsmouth bubble to put their name on the end of our lips forever here at the Motor Super Series. He was going backwards in this leg was Raymond Smith. Whoa! With that 180 there. Just when Matt Clark was thinking. As Raymond Smith hit the wall. That 180 is a massive moment. And I'll tell you what is also interesting. Matt Clark hope, has won each of his legs. 54. With ease. When it's three each, I'm telling you, that last leg will have everything. It won't be as comfortable because the treble 20 will shrink. You start thinking. You see the finishing line. You're battling with yourself mentally. And Raymond Smith's thinking, how can I start this leg 60, 45 and then go 180, 140? That's mental strength right there. It's the ability to just stand at the back and breathe and start the process and find more fruit. Even with that 134, Matt Clark Ready cannot leave a finish. 82. So it's 82 to take us the distance. So it's bullseye first dart. And what a dart that is. That's a good feeling for two darts at double 16. He likes double eight. 66. No panic just yet. And what he'll do there is he'll just get himself in order. Sometimes it might be a bit of what he decides not to. For Matt Clark, he will take 30 seconds for these three darts. Just remember a little bit earlier that Raymond did miss a few key doubles in his second game. Raymond, you'll be hoping that doesn't 16. happen again. It Game doesn't happen again. Sick and Clark Raymond Smith. will take us to leg seven. Every leg in this contest has gone with throw. Seven that does not guarantee that this one will. First. But the way Game that Clark on. has performed in this final, when he's thrown first, has been nothing short of miraculous. 12 weeks of darts. 12 winners. 41. Six down to the finals night. Down to four for the semi-final. And now down to the last leg. If that doesn't sum up the whole thing about Moda Super Series, nothing does. It's a marathon, this thing. This is game 1,352 in this series. And it will be the very last leg of it. What did I say about Matt Clark? Who opened at 140, 180. He's regular on his throw. All of a sudden, one treble will feel like gold. 60. And all of a sudden, you're creeping into treble seven. It takes someone like Raymond Smith now to hit a 140 here. And he might just do it. You can hear a pin drop in here. Everybody can hear the dart hitting the board. That 140 is one of the best he's hit this week. Maybe the very best of the lot. I'm just trying to put you into the mind of the players. Matt Clark's now thinking, 
Shake them off. What you're panicking for? You're winning your darts. 100. Herman Smith now taking the dart. It's now a 3 or one game. Nico, what is going on? He's going to switch. Oh, he's not. I was convinced he was going to go to the 17s because previously in the week, that's what he's been doing. It's a great standard of a final. There you can see three 180s in this final. And the averages are very, very 45. healthy. But Matt Clark falters. Raymond Jericoy, and Raymond Smith has got six from here to write his name into Moda Super Series history. Finally, I've called something right. I just had the feeling Matt Clark wouldn't have it all his own way after dominating his darts. 65. And that leaves a two dart combination. Matt Clark on 255. There's the breath. He'll feel like it's all away, but you've got one chance, Matt. The biggest 180 of your life right now. And all of a sudden, now he's after to go downstairs. Now it's the connotations. If he stays there, he leaves a bogey. 100 oh, That was a gamble. Is the gamble going to pay off, though? Because Raymond Smith has the first shot for the title. He's going to stay straight and go for double eight. And Go win it! Shot Raymond Smith is the man! The crew makes his way to the end, and he Raymond gets it done! £20,000 belongs to him! The gamble of coming across the planet has paid off, and he will be on a flight back to Australia in a few hours' time, and he doesn't even want to keep his own darts! He's given them to a fan in the front row, but now he can afford a new set! The biggest paycheck possible from the Motor Super Series belongs to the guru, Raymond Smith. Wonderful performance, averaged well, the confetti is everywhere, and unfortunately for Superman, he found his kryptonite in Raymond Smith. First leg Owen to Sorofers. Not be before Game on. 10 p.m., which is when we join our broadcast partners, Sporty Stuff TV. 86. Owen Bates, as we mentioned after that defeat, can still go through after this match if he wins it 4-0. I mean, if it if it if it won't miss doubles, he was, he was dominating in the early stages of that easy. match in in the scoring phase. Yeah, he was. All, all he's got to think of is winning the game, isn't it? Because if he does that, oh, then of course, if you're like Luke Little to beat Daryl Pilgrim, and he'll go through anyway. But Pilgrim has got other ideas, as we can see from the first four darts, the first five darts, oh, the first six darts. 77. Well, I suggested something dramatic was going to happen. Well, there's... A little more dramatic 44. in darts than a nine. Daryl will require 144. Can Daryl do it with his very first leg of Champions Night? Boom. Yeah, he wasn't particularly close, but 58. we'll forgive him for that. <laughs> He's seeing the, the funny side of it. Just tapping the old ticker a little yeah. bit there. I think he was getting rather excited. One hundred and five. Nine darts. Daryl Gilroy, eighty-six. Always an amazing 86. feeling, but uh, to do one on TV. Yeah, we yet to have one in front of a crowd on a finals night. Game but that is some start from Daryl, Daryl Pilgrim. Pilgrim. He's here to play. Twelve dart break a throw. With a full so finish. Like Daryl to throw for one eighty one seven seven, and the eighty-six out as Mace mentioned on the bullseye. If Owen Bates. He's going to somehow get through. He's going to have to turn it on maybe to levels that he's never reached before. Yeah, he, he, he became quite frustrated last night because he, he went through the card on Thursday, oh, winning four out of four. Oh, and then nice. one of my trips up onto the balcony, he was cussing and cursing and wires and blockers, and he was all over it. They just wouldn't go in last night. And then he, I think he started a... 
hit the panic button thinking he, he, he might not qualify. Good response from him, though, kicking off this oh, leg with the 180. 34. Getting himself down to this position after a couple of visits. Pilgrim could still be on a finish first if he can fill it up. No ifs, man. 100. Well, even he can't believe that found its way in. We've had three 180s and a 177, and we've not even completed two legs. We might get a 171. 171. That will do a 160 feet. On double eight after nine. Might not even get a go at it. 116. Strange time to lay up, Daryl. <laughs> oh, and you require 16. Yeah, it was a pretty <laughs> bad dart at the bullseye, wasn't it? Not many bad darts in this match. This could be a 10 dart leg. It, it is a 10. The second leg. Oh, and match is the best we've seen this week. That's a third 10 darter. Wow. Third leg, Owen, to throw. Look at that. Way to break back. Look Game at on. that. Two legs in, I know, but those numbers. Gives you the start they've made, though. Well, it's not going down, Chris. <laughs> 139. <laughs> 96. Well, we've promised something special. And finals night on Champions Week is already delivering. 85. This is showing me all about the minerals of Owen Bates, he's right up against it. He'd have been desperately disappointed to have lost to Luke Littler in the opening match of the session and the opening match of 60. this group one. And he's had the kitchen sink thrown at him here and he's responding. 140. Fifty. On your wire, one hundred and thirty-seven. Well, in front, after Pilgrim set off as if he was unbeatable, Bates has said, "You know what? I'm not having this. He's yeah, having that." Oh, back to Bates. back, twelve. Uh, sorry, twelve dollar in leg one, a ten, and now another twelve Quarter for Bates. To throw first. Game on. We said he might have to reach levels that he's never reached before. After three legs here, he's averaging one hundred twenty-one and a half, Mace. <laughs> Record break, breaking territory. Well, yeah, not just for here, not just for him, but for any broadcast darts match. The, the record's 1, 2, 3.5 now, I believe. Peter Wright in a pro tour against Christoph Ratajski, beating the previous best of 1, 2, 3.4 from MVG in the Premier League. 100. The 1, 2, 3.4 is still the highest TV average. Unless you watch a pro tour on your telly. <laughs> Which I do. 125. <laughs> it was against Ratajski that, that Wright did that in, and I remember it was actually Ratajski was pointing him towards the, because they used a dark connect system yeah. on a tablet, which shows the average, and he was much more enthusiastic 68. about what had happened than Peter Wright, even though just been whipped 6 0. Of course, MVG was a double 18 away from a 60 130 something yeah remarkable it was actually <laughs> against michael smith up in aberdeen computer dart size mm. there is recorded averages of around 130 on the pro tour now since we started putting that system in but the highest here at the super series 118 and change 139 the highest one i ever had against me was Mick McGowan. It was 96. <laughs> I think I, no, I don't think I'd have been far off that, and I don't think I got a, a double. It was, I'm sure it was 120. 20. Wow. Well, this is what he wants. Not the odd, just 120. For 3 1. The flatty. Even on a 120. Love it. That's bold, isn't it? What a shot that is. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, and it's worked it's an absolute oh. treat. <laughs> This Terrific tungsten, this from Owen Bates. It is class. Fifth leg going to throw. Well, the average has dipped despite Game going on. out in 15 with a 120 out to 115. Useless. <laughs> well, it's going back up now. Oh, Carry on, Owen. Oh, well, now we know why they call him the master. 
is a masterful performance. Wowzers. 44. We are in that territory of record-breaking stuff here at the Moda Super Series. Murph. 44. He can't hear me. <laughs> the darting gods can. They're tuning in. Well, it darts from the gods from Owen Bates, isn't it? 60. In a, in a church. <laughs> and it's a win. So we'll actually put him back on a level leg difference if he does get it done 4 one 123. And puts a prospect of a potential nine dart shoot out in this group. Yep. And if he does get over the line here and wins 4 1 and then Pilgrim beats Littler. Oh, and you require 154. That's exactly what we got. Can you remember back to leg one when Daryl Pilgrim was on a nine? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's gone on? Well, part of what's gone on 96. is absolutely flawless finishing from Owen Bates. Yeah, 137. The 120. And then the other one, he only had one dart 57. double because he was on it after nine darts. Oh, and you require yeah, double eight for the 10. 18 for tops. To complete an absolutely astonishing performance. Wow, wow. That is elite level stuff from Owen Bates. In the end, the average is 113.29. The best we've seen on this Champions Week.